Jay Crawford, Adam the Bull, Garrett Bush, Tyvis Powell, Jason Lloyd. Plus, da 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 da, you're loving him, Mikey McNuggets. And so many big names, it would take me hours to say all of their names. The ultimate Cleveland sports show starts now. Booyah! Hey, everybody, it's the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show on a Thursday morning. Tyvis is here. Jason is here. Hijinks uh, over the top again. We're watching funny videos. Apparently, Kirk Cousins is in store for some exciting things in Atlanta. <laughs> um, apparently, Justin Jefferson is unhappy with his quarterback situation. <laughs> And we'll get to a lot of that <laughs> and all, uh, all of these things. We got the, the whiteboards out today because we got a new game. And Mike's honestly been slacking. We haven't had a new game in a while. And maybe you did when I was away or something. I'm not sure. But I feel like we haven't done a game in a, in, in but I a don't month know, at least. I don't know what it is. Well, he won't tell us. It's a, it's a trade secret. It is. But a lot of things to get to today. The Cavs shocked us all, not by winning, but having Donovan Mitchell back. Yeah, We'll get to that later in the show. Possibly Nick Saban, or maybe we push it off yet another day if we have time. We'll definitely do an overtime because we got Tyvis today, so we'll right. definitely do Nick Saban in some capacity. Okay, that's true. I want to get to that. So, but we begin, obviously, there's a lot of Browns conversation to have as they've continued to add to the roster. Well, first, let's go to Mike. What's up? We'll talk Quentin Jefferson in just a second, but first, you can say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel is letting you bet on every game of the NCAA tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if their first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, and you can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and bet on college hoops until they cut the nets down. And today's winning FanDuel ticket comes from our guy Scott Prisbiz, his second massive parlay win of the week. This one was a 22-part same-game parlay. Jeez. Over a few NBA 22? action, twenty-two leg. He took some alternate spreads and he bet on the Raptors, which that made that's kind of when you know you may have a problem when you're betting on the Raptors. Wow. But Scott hit a twenty-two part parlay, uh, fourteen bucks, won nearly six hundred dollars. It was a Bucks Blazers, not Bucks, excuse me, Raptors Blazers parlay. So shout out to Scott okay. Prisby. That must have been a bunch of things where they were alternate likely spreads. to hit, well, right? Because the only one six hundred dollars. That's what I was gonna add. Would you rather do like? I mean, you're the parlay king around yeah. here. Would you rather do <laughs> an Earl three to four moderate long shots? Yes. Or would you rather go twenty to twenty five that are so so less what, odds? But yeah, when I do my parlay, Jason, it's yeah. strategic. I always look at the games and I say this is going to happen. Like this right here is going to hit. Problem is. FanDuel realizes like, oh, yeah, that's not, we're not going to pay you for that because that's exactly what's going to happen. So you have to throw in a couple of long shots yeah, in So there. you do a mix. Yeah, so I do All like, right. I do like 12 ones that like, that's going to hit and then like five of them is like long It could shot. go either way. Yeah. Why or not just stick with the 12 that are going to Because hit. it's going to win you like 50 bucks. Well, that's what I'm asking. But yeah. If you <laughs> See, I would just do like three or four that are nah, maybe not. If I'm a better parlay, I'm going for it all. Okay, I'm yeah. trying to I'm trying to be a wizard. <laughs> I want to be ten dollars, five to ten dollars. Just don't be a Listen, Washington I'm not wizard. Bet, they lose I'm not all like everybody else. I'm not betting a hundred dollars on it. Five to I ten dollars, and I gotta maximize my return. Yeah, you, I I you, can't do a five dollar. Why bet? can't $10? you not? Because I will look at that screen and say, <laughs> if that hits, and I only bet ten dollars, I'm gonna be so mad at myself yeah. that I didn't bet a hundred. No, you hundred? No, you should be like that's it. You should think to yourself, okay, this all right. It's a it's a whole strategy. Strategy to it, so take the five dollars, flip it to maybe three hundred dollars. Okay, yeah. Then you take that three hundred dollars. This is not your money, yeah. technically. You can bet it on something that you know is another guaranteed, and now you flip it, and now you continuously mm. make it get bigger and bigger. It's a slow grind. Every time I win, I'm angry I didn't bet more. That's yes. right. Yes. That's, that's what happens. <laughs> that's because Jason, like me, is a degenerate. And, uh, no, no, you, you, you always to, think you should have bet more. You know what more. you need to do? You need to call one eight hundred Gambler. I'm pissed when I lose, and I'm pissed when I win. That's right. I can just. That's it. Angry. Well, you're never happy. You're never happy. Uh, all right, uh, let's get right into it. The uh, start, Brown. Yep. Go ahead. 
Oh, you could just say, let's get to it. Quentin Jefferson. We'll take Quentin away. Jefferson. The Browns have added a defensive <laughs> lineman. Uh, the Browns have kind of what they've done in free agency outside of wide receiver where they had a, a glowing need. Mm -hmm. On the defensive line, they brought back all the guys that were here, except they lost Jordan Elliott, and now they've replaced him. I, I, if you want to consider that like that, I mean, Jordan Elliott was very productive last year, but I guess Q's coming off of his he's six sacks last yeah, year. I'm gonna say he could, tackle, and six sacks was probably if he would have been on this team, he'd have been second in sacks on he the team. Been. So therefore, it's it's very good production there. He he does provide you that versatility playing inside and outside. When I was with Q. And Sam and Seattle when we were both rookies. Shout out to you, Q man. We made something happen. Fifth round pick, undrafted guy. We both made the fifty three man roster. So shout out to us from back then. But anyways, Q is a guy who plays inside and outside. So he gives you that versatility. Um which is something that you need on the pass rushing side. You know, I th last year I don't think he was very good against the run game. Right. But as far as pass rush, when you get to third down, third and long, and you need that pass rush, you think about him, Zadarius, Miles, like that's something that can be productive there. I love the fact that he uh, wears the little pads like Mike Bennett used to back in the day. It tells me that he was uh, influenced by him. But I think for what's out there right now, I think this is something that you can, that's good to get. And one thing I like about Q is he brings attitude. Like he, y'all know the story about Q when they played – they play Jacksonville? Jacksonville, and he yeah. and he went in the stands and, and tried to run our Tesla fan. Really? I didn't, you didn't know about that. that. What? I don't remember. Oh, that. yeah. Where we yeah. been? So make sure y'all pull y'all comments when y'all talk about Q, because he a run our test. You go up in the stands. <laughs> and he, he <laughs> when ain't, was yeah. this? So what happened? Was, this, yeah, this what happened Early. was okay. I think he either got ejected out of the game or something. He was going back to the locker room and they like threw a drink in his face or something like that or said something. And Q went rushing into the stands about to fight the fans. You know what? If you throw a drink on someone, you're allowed to go in the stands. And it was. I'm watching the video as we speak as he was running into the tunnel. Yeah, a they poured a clear drink shot on. of a drink. Yeah. Right at him, and Q had to be held back. Yeah, I'd understand. be much more worried about him than Ron Artest. He's got 150 <laughs> pounds on Ron Artest. <laughs> but, yeah, I think it's a, it's a good signing for sure. Like I said, he brings that attitude that you need on the defensive line. And I was thinking, it's all a little off topic, not really, but I was thinking that the Browns now have the perfect thing. You got a guy in Kevin Stefanski who's a coach that's very smart, very smart coach. You got a guy in Jim Swartz who's about toughness and attitude. And then you got Bubba Ventrone who's about passion. I think those are three things that your team needs to have to be successful. And it's nice that they have it in every phase of the game. So it's a nice little pick. He fits what Jim Schwartz wants to do. You know yeah. what's interesting here, guys, Jay and Jason, you go next. But but um, you look at the defensive line and what they have now. I, I, I see – I count nine guys that I don't know – I don't know that you can bring anybody else in because in, in the middle, you now have Jefferson, Tomlinson, Hurst, and Shelby Harris all back, right? And After, Eco. Well, not, I mean, Tom, Jefferson's new, but the other guys are back. Mm -hmm. Outside, you have Miles, you have Ogbo, you have Zadarius, and you have Alex Wright. Mm -hmm. And Isaiah McGuire. And, and you still have Isaiah McGuire, and you still have Ika. They're not going to cut Ika after they right. just – I wouldn't think. Well, so, it lets you know that that front office is about competition. Right, but I'm saying, like, I, I'm imagining you're not going to draft any defensive linemen, are they? I wouldn't or, be shocked. Yeah, maybe later. I'm about to say later, later in the year. But, but like, how many D linemen do you squad. keep? Nine on the active roster yeah, at most. Yeah, for like right? a 53-man so, I mean, roster. You already got – I mean, I don't think – who's the guy you mentioned before, Ika, is uh, Isaiah McGuire. McGuire. Isaiah McGuire. I don't know. I don't think he's any kind of lock to make the team. No. But the but other nine he was guys – Wasn't he like a fifth or sixth round Fifth pick? round pick. Yeah. Right. But yeah. the other nine guys, they're going to be on the team unless they're hurt. I mean, it's a good problem to have. A, I'm going to say injuries are part of the thing. It just no, let me I know that it. when you look at it, like they literally care about competition. And it's yeah. – it don't. They really don't. It's starting to seem like they don't care about the draft thing. Like unless you're a first or second round. Like I used to tell everybody, unless you first, second, or third round pick, you're not a lock to make the roster. No, Four no. through seven and undrafted is pretty much in the same class. And the way that this is shaping up to be, yeah. If you're not good enough, you're not going to make this roster, and that's, that's it. how it should be. And it hasn't been the case with the Browns until recently, forever. Yes. But now it is. Jason, what do you think about the move? <laughs> that's where I was going to end with, but I'll start with it because that's what I was yeah. thinking about this morning. Taki and now Jordan Elliott, both drafted by these guys, yeah. and they let them walk. And, and you know, there was a knock not that long ago. I don't know if it was a knock, but it was a, these guys like to hold on to their own draft picks. Mm -hmm. And and those were the two that I thought showed something last right. year that 
boy, they're, they're, they're developing. There's something coming on. Jordan wasn't very good two years ago. Last yeah. year, I thought he was much yeah, better. Nice season. Yeah, and you hope that these guys, that the Browns didn't plant the soil, plant the seed in the soil and water it. Now someone else is going to mm-hmm. take advantage of it. But Quentin Jefferson certainly is an upgrade in a pass rush over Jordan Elliott. Without a doubt. And, and they've never really had, I mean, we know about the problems that they had at, inside two years ago. They filled it last year. They, they very much shorted it up. But they've never had, really had an interior pass rush. And I can't tell you how long. I mean, I go back to Gerard Warren was supposed to be that guy yeah. that provided that interior push. So this will be a different look. And, and for that, you know, he's been on five teams in five years, so he's bounced around a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, but and, and I was actually reading a story this morning. I think it was the New York Post. And Quinton, like, I root for the guy just based on this piece about he was very open with his battle with alcoholism and yeah. with drinking. Yeah, he was. And, and he's a father of four. He talked about the pressure of being in the NFL and it's never ending and one bad day and you could be out of the league and not get back in. And he didn't handle it well during COVID and he developed, he really, his drinking got out of control and his wife sort of called him on it and said, you got to get some help. Mm. And it was just a really well done piece on just how open and vulnerable he was to some of the struggles that come with playing in the NFL. So, yeah, you know, good for him. Yeah. Yeah. To acknowledge it, to recognize it, to get help for it. He's been sober now, I think four years. I don't remember how old the article was, but about three or four years he's been clean now. And um, so, yeah, I'm excited to see him out there and see if he can really provide an interior pass rush. You know why? You know what I like about Q? And this is has nothing to do with football related. Q is the reason why, and it's, a, it's not a pause because I'm talking about draws. He, he helped me change my underwear choice. <laughs> he did. I was into the Ethica. From, from what? I was what? in the Ethica draws because that was like the hot thing at the time. Okay. And he was like, <laughs> not a shocker that I have never heard of Ethica. <laughs> he go, Ethica, they got the nice, they like compression pants with the nice little prints on Why it. Why would you stuff. think I would know what those are? Oh my God. I didn't play in the NFL. You got to get out more, boy. <laughs> they not, they not that expensive, but they was like the hottest uh, thing back in the yeah, day. I, they, I didn't know they were called Ethica, but I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've seen a lot of dudes switch, in underwear yeah, in my life. So yeah. Life. So he was like, we, we was sitting there one day and he had shopped at Nordstrom's. He was like, you need to try these sax draws. And I'm like, what's that? S A K S or No, S A S A X X. Sax. It's like eight. you need to try these sax draws. I was like, what's that? Yeah. He he's like, oh bro, it's like these draws and they got like the slit in the middle and it holds your 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 area. It holds it up. So I was like, it's like, man, that sound loud. So I went and bought a pair. <laughs> And now that's the only thing I wear. So shout that's out to it. Q for helping me go, uh, with some sax draws. the underwear problem. <laughs> let, me, let me just say this about the situation, Mike, before you jump in. Um, you know, the Browns are in a position now with such, you know, Miles Garrett's the only elite player on their defensive line, yes, right? That's been yeah. that way for Everybody else on that years. defensive line is, is <laughs> like a good, solid player. There's a lot of good, solid players on the defensive line. Yes. Uh, and then you got like the unproven guys, Alex Wright, who showed you something last year, and mm-hmm. Eco showed you nothing. Right. But guys two through seven on their defensive line are all good, solid players. Mm-hmm. Two years ago, they had maybe one guy in that group. Now they have six guys in that no, group. That was your Dave Young. And that's the key. Like, you need to have your superstars to win in the NFL. We mm-hmm. all get it. But the best teams fill the. How many superstars can you have? You can't have that many. But the good teams have a lot of good, solid players. And the Browns have the ability now to say, okay, it's a pass rushing uh, down. We're going to have Quentin Jefferson out there. Yeah. All right, so it's a run stopping down. We're going to have Maurice Hurst out there, whatever. Yeah. You know, you have guys that have their strengths and weaknesses. And especially because Jefferson, Hurst, and uh, Shelby. Uh, Shelby Harris, they're all older players. Mm-hmm. You don't want them playing too much. Right. They're not. They're going to be fresh. They're going to be good and probably play better because they're rotating in and out. Well, I mean, if it if things go according to plan, you will want your run stop in on first and second down. And right. Then you want your pass rush on third down so they can right. go all out. Sure. It definitely provides them that ability to do those things. But in the NFL, it's such a it, – it, it's always changing. You know, you got to be able to do both. And hopefully now that Q is under Jim Schwartz, because th- obviously he changed a lot about things on the D line that that helps him become a better run defender. Sure, and but even if he does, Tyvis, there's enough guys there where you're not going to want him no, yeah. to do too I many mean, plays, yeah. right? You no, know, they, two plays max, especially in the interior. You probably right. do two plays and then rotate. But you mentioned 
uh, Jason, that they haven't had an interior pass rusher, right? Yeah. Uh, who was their leading interior? Like, didn't Tomlinson have three and a half sacks last year? Or? Yeah, Tomlinson had three and a half sacks. What does Shelby have? Uh, I'll tell you one sec. Didn't Tomlinson have three sacks in one game? I think he, yeah, all his sacks came against Arizona. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. So so really Shelby count. had one and a half sacks. I mean, I'd like to know the last time the Browns had a Sheld- defensive tackle. Sheldon Richardson. Six. Did he have six sacks? I don't know. They, you it, probably but he right. was really no, good. I, I yeah, that. he was really yeah, Sheldon good. Sheldon was pretty good. good. But to me, the big deal there is certainly, like, if you get pressure up the middle, well, now the quarterback's getting out of the pocket quicker, and maybe he's running right into Miles Garrett's lap. You know? I mean, a lot of teams are going the, the DN to with a D tackle route. Like, you think about T.J. Watt. Why is he so so successful? Because he got Cam Hayward. You think about Christian Wilkins just paired up with uh, Max Crosby. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the, Gi- the Giants D-line yeah. is crazy. And the Bengals, <laughs> to your point, the, belt, the Bengals just signed Sheldon Rankins, who's a good pass rushing oh, DT, yeah. to help Trey Hendrickson. Yes, you want that pressure. But see, he had DJ Reader all these years, so. Right, but DJ's not a great No, pass he's, a, he's more of a run stopper. Yeah, than, right. he's fine as a pass but, rusher, but he's yeah. a specialist yeah. in the run stopper. Go ahead, Mike. I want to I mention two more things with Jefferson. A, durability. We talk about how physical yeah. defensive line play is guys get hurt we saw last year alone miles had the shoulder injury mo hurst tore his peck agbo tore his peck guys in and out he really hasn't missed many games in his career he's played 90 of his last 98 career games which is incredible between him and shelby harris those are two of the most versatile and durable yeah defensive tackles in football he's listed at 290 he's played inside and outside he's not just an inside pass rusher you actually could put him on the outside sure in certain situations if you want and I go back and think of how Jim Schwartz handled his defensive line rotations in Philadelphia and Tennessee. He rotated. We saw it a little bit last year, but even a bigger extent back with Philadelphia, especially when they had eight, nine guys like Cleveland has now. Right. Two, three plays, get out, get back in two, three plays later, stay fresh. Right. There are so many different combinations of defensive <coughs> linemen he could put out there, whether it's Miles, Adarius, Ogbo, and Jefferson, or you right, want to go sure. run stop. That I can't imagine anyone's happier this morning than Jim Schwartz, knowing he has – all the tools in his tool belt now to create chaos and havoc with just that front four lineman. Yeah, I, I mean, that's huge. Even Miles Garrett, it may sound a little counterintuitive, but Miles Garrett plays such a high percentage of the plays. If you cut him down a little bit, he probably don't want to. He probably doesn't want to, but it probably would benefit him because what do we know about Miles Garrett? He's He has consistently played his worst football late in the year. His number is. And decrease. maybe if he played a little less, he'd be fresher towards the end of the season. Well, he's playing less than he was early in his career. Right. <laughs> early in his career, him and I remember him and like Larry, 90, him right? and Larry Ogunjobi were over ninety yeah, percent. Yeah, yeah. It was crazy how high how the number of snaps that they were out on the field. So, to your point, they've really increased the depth over the last, certainly over the last four or five years. Yeah. They've really added to the depth on that defensive line. I, it's pretty. It's a good signing. I mean, it's hard. It's a good move. It's yeah. definitely a. Pos- it's not a productive a, one for yeah. sure. I mean, it's not. It's not. The, it might not be the splash right. that everybody wants. He might not have the name, but yeah. when you think about the production and what he can do yeah. for this defense, I mean, you you definitely want a nice, solid rotational piece. And that's the thing. It's yes, you want the big one name opposite of Miles, all of that. But at the end of the day, you got your one main guy that teams are going to worry about, and then you got a whole bunch of guys that can rotate and get you that same level of production. That's the thing. Right. You want to, no matter who's in there, still have that uh, high production level, right. and that's what Quint Q gives you. So yeah. it's a nice sign there. So I don't know that any of us were expecting the Browns to sign another defensive lineman. I know I really didn't think they would because they had so many, and now they've added another position where – I'm not really expecting the Browns to add, but maybe they will surprise us after they've already done something and it really is their biggest move, and that's at wide receiver. We know the Browns have traded for Jerry Judy, uh, and and so their wide receiving core is certainly better, a lot better than it was. But could they be in the market for another wide receiver, or do we think that's impossible? Mike Williams, we've talked a lot about him. Mike Williams was cut by the Chargers as yesterday officially became the first day of the 2024 football season. Uh, Mike Williams on the books for a $32 million cap. <laughs> right? For a $32 million cap? It? He was. Now he's cut, so they saved him. Oh, million. because they cut him. Got Is it. he? Did he really tweet out that he wants to no, play? No, no, no. That okay. was a fake account. That was okay. a fake account. Got to be careful this time of the year. A lot yeah. of fake stuff. Out. Bunch of people. Bunch of uh, People got busted by the fake Adam Schefter on the uh, 
on the Patrick Queen tweet, I think yeah. it was. But see, it should be it, – it's, it's easy to – I've been tricked a couple times. Yeah. But if you put these guys on text alert, right, right, then right. you know you're getting the authenticated. So part of it is that hard about the notification. Yeah, thing? the notification. Part. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, the problem. Jason by Jason Lloyd. That, the problem is, there ain't no need putting that on the there. The problem is no Elon Musk ruined Twitter by making the blue check mark meaningless. Well, yeah. yeah. But he got the. Don't you get a gold one or something? No, this is, I don't know. But anybody could get by themselves a check mark, right? Now. So it's right. it's stupid. What do you guys think about Mike Williams, though? So I I think if the Browns were to go after Mike Williams, it would tell me one thing and one thing only. They're not they they they're saying that the Elijah Moore trade was messed up. They shouldn't have did it. That's, well, they shouldn't. Have that's what that tells me. Like yeah. that, and I don't think they're willing to say that because. They got to be with him in training camp, and they seen what they seen, and they know that he was a productive player. I think to them, their challenge is how do we get him more involved? You know, it was at times of the season, late in the season, he played well at times. And I think they're trying to figure out to themselves how do they get that production out of him for 17 games opposed to the last four or five games of the season. So I, I think, I for me, I would love it. I mean, it's a big name. Cedric Tillman could model his game after him. You know, they got similar play styles and stuff like that. That would be nice. But I don't think that they're willing to say that because they'll say we got Coop, Judy, and um, Elijah Moore. And I'm not yeah. saying that that's right because, I, I, like I said, I want to be on record. I would go get Mike Williams, but I just don't think that they would. They'll look at him and say that that's a need that we need to make right now, especially yeah. paying him money like that. Can I flip this? If you're Mike Williams, why would you want to come here right now? You're, you're probably on a one-year deal. It's the Deshaun thing. But he's been hurt. Yeah, but there's better quarterbacks than Deshaun. Where and maybe he can and, end up. and if, you, if I'm Mike Williams and I look at this receiver, and, and I don't think he's coming here. He was yeah. on my list when we did the exercise right. last week of free agency. Before the Judy trade. Yeah, right. before the Judy trade. That was the guy that yeah, I that's what That's what I said. Yeah. But now, you know, now that Judy's here, things are different. If, and, and now that he's a free agent, I don't know if, if I'm Mike Williams why he would come here when you look at Amari Cooper and Jerry Judy. Uh, and Elijah Moore, these are right, guys that they've like invested the 2A in. or the 2B, whatever yeah. you'd be. And, yeah. and there's questions about the quarterback of yes. his health, whether he can stay on the field. Unless they just woefully overpaid. <laughs> and why would right. they do that why? when they yeah. just traded for Judy? Unless the Browns just blew him away financially, if which I'm, I don't think they're going to. Why would, why would, if I'm Mike Williams, I don't want to come yeah, If I was point. Mike, I would, tell the, I would pick up that phone and say, hey, Patrick Mahomes, yeah. what's going on? I know yeah. you need a guy. 100%. I could be the number one over there. Um, I could play on a one-year prove-it deal, but knowing you, my numbers is going to be inflated because you're going to pass the ball a lot. With Cleveland, if they became a passing or more passing team, then cool. But, but still, there's a lot of mouths to feed. True. I mean, and you didn't even mention David Njoku. Right, right. You know, right. So, yeah, that's just And, and Williams is still coming off an injury. He might and get off to a slow start. He's probably going to be stuck on a one-year deal. Right. If he yeah. wants any sort of big-dollar money down the road, He's going to need to produce this year yeah. to have any chance at another contract. It doesn't make just, any sense for him. Just in the AFC alone, Kansas City would be the number two option. In, in Pittsburgh, he'd be the number two option. In Buffalo, he'd be the number two option. I've been texting with Zach this morning. He said the Jets, too. He said the Jets and the Chiefs if they don't get Hollywood and then possibly the Patriots What if that. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is uh, running for vice president? Well, then you can cross the Jets off the list. <laughs> and it's Tyrod Taylor. <laughs> starting, I still, uh, I always, they, kept, they was talking about last year. He has year. chemistry with Tyrod. They played in L.A. together. What's that? Who? Mike Williams has chemistry with Tyrod. He ain't they played it. They played in L.A. together. In the Detroit. end, yes. Obviously, I'd like Mike Williams on the Browns, but Jason makes an excellent point. It makes no sense unless the Browns overpaid him, which, as I agree with him, Why they're not going to do. No, they're not going to do, do that. that. So, uh, I would think if I'm signing Mike Williams, I'm give, I want to give him a low base with a lot of incentives. Right. Because and again, why would he want that? Because yeah. how many opportunities is he really going to have to hit those incentives? Right. 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 With as many yeah. people right. as there. Yeah, he's room. not coming here. That's not realistic. Um, I, I think if you're going to go get another veteran wide receiver, if you're the Browns, you get a guy who's like back, you, you know, who's not a guy like I mentioned in Tyler Boyd, who's used to being the third receiver on a team. That that makes more. Oh, he's talking if to the you, Steelers. You, you which make, if Tyler Boyd ends up on the Steelers, I'm going to be very unhappy. <laughs> I don't want him on the Steelers. It's going to make me sick. If they if they pursue another receiver, it's going to be the Marquise Goodwin type of one year guy. Hunter Winfrey. Low money. Pick your spot. Yes, pick your spot there. on usage. He's a what? Hunter Winfrey. He could be a nice 
Rotate and slot piece, run good routes, which is something guys, that Zach Jackson uh, this morning. I'm not on board with white receivers. I'm not a fan. <laughs> That's I'm kidding. I'm kidding. What did Zach say? He said the Browns will at least have discussions about Hunter Renfro. Okay. I mean, have discussions doesn't mean anything. That's I'm about to say. Hunter Renfro, st- what's a, what, did he, what did he have, two catches last year? He was very unproductive Yeah, he didn't do season. nothing last year. He had one season. He's a great route runner. Well, they were also interested in Joe Flacco, and we see how that turned out. They were interested in bringing back Flacco. Oh, yeah. No, right. they weren't. Yeah, come on now. Hunter, did, did I mean, if they signed Henry Renfro, it's fine. Did he play really with Deshaun? Yeah. He did. Oh. Clemson. Oh. Yeah. And Mike Williams. All right. Well, there you go. Yeah, Mike Williams. I ain't saying it's somebody there. like, you know, it's just a nice rotational piece. Yeah. When you look at – Mike, you got a read before I move on here? I do real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're going to do a read. We appreciate everyone tuning in watching today. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. We did a longer Quentin Jefferson breakout video this morning for Behind the Glass if you guys want to watch. And uh, sometimes there are quotes that happen on this show that taken out of context are beautiful. Mm-hmm. And we had one that happened. I'm not even quite sure you guys picked it up. But, Steve, take tag board full here. I just want to take one second to appreciate this great quote here. Q helped me change my underwear. <laughs> period. Tyvis, I just want to say thank you. That will go down in the UCSS quote board mm. Hall of Fame. I thank you. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. You should market that. We did. Yeah. He helped me change. Shout out to Sachs. If you, ain't got, if you ain't got a pair of Sachs drawers, you got to get him on the show. Service. I, I told Tyvis he got to text Q and see if we get him on. I see, yeah, I, I take, I mean, that's funny. I'm sure I still got. I mean, he's been trying to get Richard Sherman on for two years. We got to pay, we gotta pay no, him a million dollars. We've got, we've got an answer from Sherm. At least got to pay will. Sherman a million dollars to come on the show. I think. Is that what he said? No, I no, don't know, but no. it would take a lot. I just joked with Sherm the other yeah. day. Jer- Sherm tells me, yeah, he we was we was talking about. Uh, he told me that I make bad decisions. And I told him, yeah, like getting drunk and driving. <laughs> I was going to say, he's not going to tell anyone about bad decisions right now. <laughs> Damn. Oh, yeah, we go at it. Oh, we All go right. at it. <laughs> you think me and Steve is bad. Oh, <laughs> All right, let's keep it moving. So, I want to move to the next subject, and that's when you look at the Browns' defense, right? We talked about the defensive line already today. Doesn't seem like they have any obvious roster spots. You look at the secondary for the Browns. Doesn't seem like there's any obvious roster spots. They got a lot of players, both safety and defensive back. Mm-hmm. The one position group on defense where they don't have a lot of proven talent is linebacker. Obviously, they just added Jordan Hicks. Mm-hmm. They have JOK. The only other linebacker on the roster right now that was drafted, period, is Tony Fields, who, you know, that guy could easily be gone, too. Yeah. So they really only have two legitimate linebackers on the roster. The now, that. we understand the Browns don't maybe value linebacker that highly. And just in general in the league, the position is less valued than it was in the past. And you don't have to have a ton of, you know, linebackers. But mm-hmm. you need more than two guys that can play. And so that's a position, I think, not a desperate need because they have two good linebackers. But whether it's still free agency or the draft, linebacker is where they have the most spots available on the roster and one of, go ahead no no you're getting to it i thought yeah. you're gonna ask him a question i said don't forget Devin bush that's what i'm getting to that's a long build-up mike i'm doing a long build-up so Devin bush <laughs> two hours to fill yeah <laughs> Devin bush is a guy who may be able to we know the browns lost two linebackers in free agency they've added one could they be adding a second Devin bush a one-time first round pick of the dreaded pittsburgh steelers uh, meeting with the Browns today. You know we're past the main crux of free agency when the when guys are starting to meet with teams. Because the, the, most of the top 100 free agents just sign without meetings. Yes. But th- once we get to, like, day four where we're at now, now it's now you got to meet with a few teams. Mm-hmm. You know. So, anyway, Devin Bush. What do we think of Devin Bush? I mean, he's okay. The fir- he's a first-round talent. That's, that's the best part. You're yeah. probably getting him at a lower deal. He's a first-round talent. I think he's a... I want to say he's more of a run stuffer than a than a pass yeah. guy. Well, right? Hicks has been. Be- uh, well, Hicks is a run guy too, more. So. Which it, which gets me because, like I said, I play DB and I always depreciate those high price hookers. So that's what we call the linebackers. <laughs> high price hookers. We've All now, linebackers. We've now- We've so, now covered underwear, sad. No, well, so, so, so you know, they, so. they're responsible for the hook area. I thought that was a Malik Hooker No, thing, like 10, so you get hook drops is 10 yeah. to 12 yards. Cover okay. three, 10 to 12 yards, one yard outside the hash. And if you get there and, and help a DB yeah. in that dig window, you are called a high price hooker. Wait a second, we got to ask some questions on this. Number, 
So all the linebackers or just the linebackers that helped in those situations were called? The high. ones that did their job. They yeah. got the 10 to 12 you yards. High price hookers. High price hookers. Why high priced? Because they're, they're doing their job, which other linebackers get enticed by play action and stuff. Okay. So, like, if they go diving in there, yeah. not at dig Are window. Are those guys low red open. hookers? No, you just call them. A, they're Jags. Uh, that's Jags. very dismissive. Yeah. Calling somebody a Jag. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It, it, so, back, right. point, of the, the point of the story yeah. is Taki Taki was considered a high priced hooker. Okay. He was. And, he, and Devin Bush is not. you know this? That's what I would. That's what hooker? we would have called you. Oh, you know, back. This is Seattle turns high price hooker. So <laughs> Devin Bush is not a high price hooker. No, because he's a he's a run stopper. I don't know how he is against the pass. I've never really seen him make a play on the ball in the passing game, but I have seen him come up and hit some stuff. Boom. So that's great there. Um, I mean, yeah, like I say, he's a first round talent. Is he my first choice? No, I always I still say Jerome Baker, the touchdown maker from Benedictine that went to the Buckeyes go right. Bucks, would be my first choice. Him and JOK together, same athletic ability. It would be magical there, but I'm not Andrew Barry, so I would take Devin Bush, who was a yeah. first round talent. And Devin Bush is a young player. He's 25 years old. And you know, they uh, love, you know, they like young guys. Yep. He'll turn 26 this summer. He's a Michigan man. I know. What do you think of that? I know. Uh, played 13 games last year, 17 the year before, 14 the year before, and five the year before that. So he's missed a decent amount of time due to injury. Only started three games in Seattle last year. Played in 13 total. We saw the, the rest of the numbers. I mean, you know, whether they sign him, I mean, he's just – he's a veteran. He's fine. Yeah. I, it doesn't excite excited. me. He's more like a newer cooker, not really a Vegas cooker. <laughs> <laughs> Got a gunshot wound. <laughs> Maybe a neck tattoo. He was more like Camden. He's more like a Camden hunker. Or she. He. Um, all right. There you go with Devin Bush. What else you got on Devin Bush, Mike? You excited about Devin uh, Bush? Yeah, I am. I mean, excited might not be the right word. Jerome Baker, I think in a perfect world, is a, a better player and fits a little better next to Jordan Hicks and uh, the other linebackers they have, JOK and Diabate and Tony Fields. But at the end of the day, he does add a level of athleticism. I know he had some knee issues coming out of college in his first year with Pittsburgh, but he was an athletic freak. And once again, Tyrus, I just want to say thank you. Steve, take tag word full again. <laughs> this, again? Is, this is one of Anthony's new jobs, as we know, is to turn weird quotes into uh, tag boards and <laughs> quote fact. boards. So, Tyvis. Two for two. It's a two fact. Two. That's a great listen. People are going to read that and they're going to say, what is he talking about? <laughs> and then you'll hear, like, that's football terminology right there. So I just put you inside a locker room of what you call a hook dropper that does uh, his job hookers. correctly. A hook dropper. Two classic hookers. quotes today, all-time quotes. Hey, you know. We're gonna, we're, Anthony's going to start doing this on a daily basis if Good. he can to Good. take like these out-of-context quotes, put them yeah. on Twitter, and do uh, other stuff with them. Speaking of coming up later today, the yeah. Ultimate 216 though, with Earl the Pearl is airing at 5 o'clock. He had a little titty last week. He's got QC. Little Quincy titty. This week. Do, 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 do. Uh, so, yeah, make sure you check out Earl on the 216 show at 5 o'clock. I'm sure they'll be talking Browns. Anytime Quincy's on, we will get some great insight from Quincy. So make sure you all tune in to Earl they Quincy Carey on the Ultimate 216 show at 5 o'clock today. One other thing I wanted to promote here real quick. Um, my friend Erin was here before the show. She was taking some photos of me. I wanted some new <laughs> photographs, right? And uh, she is a professional photographer and top of her game. She's actually uh, uh, just an amazing photographer. She goes to we- she gets hired to do weddings all over the country. She's going to a wedding in Jamaica oh. to f- do a wedding in Jamaica. In a, Weekend, like a month. Shabba. Your dad's from Jamaica, right? Yeah, yeah. So know, there you go. That, maybe, yeah. see dad, maybe your dad will be at the wedding. He might be. Is she, is she going to run away, babe? I have no idea. No. She didn't tell me exactly where she's going. <laughs> but anyway, if you're interested in hiring a top-notch photographer for weddings... Uh, christenings, bar mitzvahs, whatever, uh, headshots, check out erincoveycreative.com, E-R-I-N-C-O-V-E-Y creative.com. There you go. Can't wait to see those headshots. The Browns also made a few other that moves yesterday. That was very obnoxious, Mike. <laughs> Why? I said I Put it in the, Make sure you quote that, Anthony, since you quote stuff. That was stuff. so obnoxious. <laughs> F you. God forbid I want to take 30 seconds to promote my friend. I said I want to see the headshots. I'm, you shaved the today. Headshots. I'm sure they come out I'm going to give you a headshot in about eight seconds. <laughs> I think they're going to come out great. You shaved. You look good today, Bull. <laughs> Down nine pounds Go ahead, last wise week. Guy. I, I w- that was a compliment to you, man. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know where that came from, the, yeah. the negative energy. Yeah, right. uh, speaking of other moves, though, 
The Browns made three moves yesterday. I've only heard of one of the three people they hired and or acquired. Yeah. Gio Ricci. Nobody, Tony, nobody's heard of him before. Tony Brown and Nick Charlton. The only if I reason gave you I... These three names, real quick, well, if I gave yeah. you these three names before we did a research, would you be able to pick out which one's the coach and which two are the players? I probably wouldn't. Once I was reminded of Tony Brown, I remembered that he was on the Bengals for one year, and I like vaguely remembered him being like a solid special teams guy. Wasn't Nick Charlton like a left-handed closer for Norm. the Norm. That was Norm Charlton. <laughs> I know. In fact, there's uh, – I just saw this yesterday. There's, um, there's a parody account on Twitter that's very funny – with his picture, and, it's, and the name is Norm Charlatan. Uh-huh. And he just, you know, makes fun of everybody. But, uh, yeah, part of the, the, the Nasty Boys, right? Yeah. It's him, Dibble. Rob Dibble, and Randy Myers. Myers. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, well, I'm sure these guys have never heard I know, of any of them. I know. Not sure. Yeah, what, what, tell the people what they need <laughs> to know about these three guys, though. I, I mean, okay, so Charlton, whatever, what's his first name, Nick? Nick Charlton. Nicholas. Nicol- Nicholas. <laughs> Nicholas Charlton sounds very professional. He is a new coach with the Browns. He's going to be their run game coordinator. Uh, he, there's some of the stuff. He was the offensive coordinator at UConn, the youngest head coach in Division One college for the main, I believe they're the main Black Bears. Isn't that the name of the team? The main Black Bears. Uh, I believe they're the only Division One team in all of Maine from 2019-2021. So I, I know nothing about him. I never heard of the guy before. I'm sure nobody here has heard of the guy before. I'm sure nobody on the planet, unless they went to school at Maine or UConn or they're related to him, have heard of this guy before. Anybody want to pretend they've heard of him before? Uh, the only reason I'd ever heard his name yeah. was because when I was in Texas at the time, another coach was interviewing for the main job, and it went to Charlton instead of the guy that was interviewing. <laughs> okay. Outside of hearing his name in simply the – Ryan Canty was not hired because they hired Nick Charlton. Had never heard of him in my entire life. I have no idea what offensive philosophy he brings. Yeah. The run game coordinator position, I tried to look into it. It's hard to find main highlights from 2019 and 2020, and UConn yeah. was abysmal the last two years. So I, I wish I had more for the fans, mm. but I really don't know what to expect. Um, unlike most of you, I've actually done play-by-play in the state of Maine. How about that? I cannot say I have. You can't say that. I don't think I've ever been to Maine. I've never been to Maine. It's one of the few states I've never been to. Yeah, I don't blame you. There's nothing much there. Uh, but I heard uh, it's beautiful. No, it is. Yeah, but I'd uh, like to go. It's all I got. You know, I like to go Cleveland. It's a great place. We're in Cleveland all the time. I know. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this guy added to the coaching staff. Congratulations to him. The one thing I want to mention with him, though, they hired Bill Musgrave last season. Yeah. He came from Cal. He had an extensive coaching history. Sure. Head coach at Cal to come in and help with this run game. His specialty was the shotgun run game. I haven't heard if they fired him, if he's still on the staff. I have to imagine if they brought this guy in, Nick Charlton, Musgrave would no longer be there. But that's the only one thing I want to draw a connection to Musgrave was hired for this role last year essentially yeah. now they've replaced Bill Musgrave with Nick Charlton what that means what impact did Musgrave have in 2023 I, I don't I wish I knew I don't maybe have next year we'll be replaced by Tyvis Powell we, I don't know hey listen now they I wouldn't mind going into coaching because they fire coaches and still pay salaries that's oh, true so it's like you know if you're gonna fire me but you're yeah. gonna pay me my salary that's a perfect scenario but so I don't want to be fired. I did a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that in the NFL a lot. I don't, mm, you know, get that's cut good. every other week. Getting fired I, sucks. I don't do that. Uh, okay, so the other, the two players they signed, Tony Brown is a special teams guy. He played for Ray Ventrone in Indianapolis in 2022. So, obviously, there's some familiarity there. Uh, I think he's a defensive back by trade. He's really a special team. He's a special guy. teamer for the most part, yeah. But I think he's a defensive back, right? Yeah. I think so. Uh, I guess it's a good guess based on his number. Although it's that's like a Mike Ford replacement, basically. Yeah, right. That's exactly so, what it is. Whatever. There's not much to say. I mean, uh, Anybody, any thoughts? He was fine. He's fine. I need. I would love to know his gunner stats. I wish you had his tackles on yeah, the special let's go. team. Some gunner stats. I know you. Right. Yeah, that, 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 what is a gunner stat? Like tackles on as a gunner. Yeah. Like yeah, but I'm not sure they specify that. No, they don't. That's why I said you would never find it. Oh, I, yeah. There's got to be somewhere. That track. I'm sure teams track. track. Gunner I'm sure stats. teams yeah, track. Gunner right. tackle. Let me Absolutely. see if I can pull it up. You guys, you guys talk about Tony Brown, Gio Don't worry Ritchie. About it. The, no. the other no, guy there's, there's is no way basically a, like he's a half tight end, half fullback type of guy. The Browns haven't had a fullback since uh, what's his name? Uh, 
Nick Harris. No, we no, just no, no. cut him like two years ago. Johnny uh, Stanton. Oh, Stanton. Johnny Stanton. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Remember he was trying to become a long snapper? Yeah. Did he I've, come on the show with us and he was trying to become did. a long snapper? Yeah, or is that some, I don't know. I mean, this is the Harrison Bryant replacement because that's what Harrison Bryant did a lot of H-back and right. fullback type. He's, ba- he's basically an H-back. I think can, he, can he take a quarterback sneak? <laughs> yeah. Gio I mean, Ricci. I don't know. No, definitely. I think his best season he had like – one catch for or eight catches for forty yards or something. Is the one guy still under contract? Um, Akins? Akins, yes. Okay, so they got him for okay. another year. Anyway, listen, these are just moves the Browns have made. They're they're back end to the roster guys, but it is what it is. There's has not Kansas much to say City made any moves about any of these guys? <laughs> Nothing big. At this point. <laughs> uh, but again, I mean, I forgot when we we're talking about yeah. this team moving on from its own draft picks. Harrison Bryant's another one. So it's Harrison Bryant, That's Taki true. Taki, and Jordan Elliott, it's, right. it's, who were contribute. Like all three of those guys contributed to this yep. team. It started with Richard LeCount. They yeah. Were- also, uh, what's his name? The linebacker we mentioned yesterday is gone. Oh, who's always Jacob hurt? Phillips. 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 Yeah. yeah That's yeah, another yeah. one. They drafted oh, him yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, guess what? I found gunner tackles. Did you? Did found you gunner tackles. I did. Yeah. Uh, in 2023, Jalen Reeves Mabin and Neville Hewitt, Mabin of the Lions, Hewitt of the Texans, led the NFL with 14 special teams tackles. I've never heard of either one. I heard, a ne- I I heard of Hewitt because I played. Where, 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 I might have been with the Jets or the Texans when I was with him. So, so how many did Tony Brown have? Player. He's not in the top 50. Okay. Mm-hmm. Not in the top 75, excuse me. What about in 2022 when he played <laughs> with Ra- Raven Trone? In 2022... I can't believe you found gunner tackles. No, it's not gunner. It's what special it's, teams tackles. This is how obsessed people in Cleveland are. I'd I be wanting to about know. About that we're talking about gunner tackles ahead of the Guardians two weeks from now opening yeah, the season. Well, the, gu- <laughs> the gunner, gunner is, well, it's, it's near and dear to my heart. All right, Mike. We, so, in 2022, yeah. it, the leader had George Odom had 21 yeah. with San Francisco. Tied for 73rd had eight, so a five difference. He's not tied for... 73rd. All right. So well, we're going to move on because, yes. uh, by the way, folks, uh, we announced it yesterday. We did, but Bo, let me hit this button first. And yeah. now you can tell the people what's coming up. Yeah. So I just want to tell people that uh, starting on Monday, March 25th, Zach Meisel and I, the ultimate Cleveland Guardian show every Monday. Uh, the time may vary, unlike our other shows, because Zach travels with the team. And so, you know, the like opening day, we might be a different time. And the Guardians are playing every year in April. There's the uh, Patriots Day game in Boston. That's an 11 a.m. game. The Guardians are playing in that game. So probably that day will go later. Most weeks it'll be at 3 p.m., but there will be some fluidity. We will let you know every Monday what time the show will be on. And that's going to start the Monday before the season starts. Perfect. All right, but we'll get to our next stop. We actually hit all that stuff, all the stuff that came in this morning. Yeah. At almost the exact time we were supposed to get out of Look it. So that. kudos to you guys for Look staying that. on track here. All right. Professional. This, uh, this next topic was a little bit changed with the signing of Quentin Jefferson this morning. But before they had signed Quentin Jefferson, it had looked for the most part, and even with the Jefferson, they're just replacing Jordan Elliott with him. They decided to run it back, essentially, in year two with Jim Schwartz. Swap out Taki Taki for Jordan Hicks. Swap out Jordan Elliott for Quentin Jefferson. But they brought back Hurst. They brought back Harris, Zadarius. Essentially the bare bones of this defense looks very similar heading into 2024 right now as it did in 2023. We had talked about the potential of a splash signing, whether it was Christian Wilkins, Jonathan Grenard, Bryce Huff, whoever. Brown said, no, we're good. We're going to make some marginal moves. Right. They didn't money. make any significant – Exactly. Any, any difference-maker players on defense. Well, they could be difference-makers, but not big-picture difference-makers that are going to change the complexion of how you run a defense. Okay. So, Go with ahead. that being said, yeah. do you agree with the strategy or the idea that the Browns should run it back, essentially, defensively in 2024? I, I personally don't have a problem with how the Browns have done it. Now, I do think the Browns' defense, when you, when you look back at the season, I don't, it wasn't as good as I think we thought it was. Does that make sense? Or no? I think, I think that's fair. I think, huh? it's fa- I think it's fair. Are you laughing because it sounds funny or because you disagree? No, it sounds funny. It does sound funny. It wasn't as good as we thought it was. I think, on the other hand, it wasn't as bad, obviously, as how they played against Houston. Yeah. The season ended with a sour taste because the defense was embarrassingly bad against Houston. 
And you think of the, <coughs> like, for a lot of the season, we were talking about the Browns. Are they an all-time defense? Are they all-time? Well, all-time defense don't get boat raced in their first playoff game. Correct. And that's exactly what happened. So, I guess how you feel about them running it back is how you feel about what they really are on defense. Because if you think they're really a top-five defense, then, yeah, run it back. If you don't, if you think they were a little fraudulent, then maybe they shouldn't have run it back. So I'll put it to you guys. Jason, go ahead. Well, it was really the home road splits that was so odd, and I've never gotten a good answer as to what they came up with. It it was so strange how much better they were at home than they were on the road, and a little bit of differential, fine, but it was ridiculous how much – there it is there, the the home road splits. I mean – Don't you think a good part of that is just who they played on the road versus at home? Maybe, but – the number is extreme. Yeah. I mean, the, the difference is extreme. The, when I said, you know, the quality of opponents on the road, yeah, it was better. That accounts for some of it. Right. But and they played better quarterbacks on the road than they yeah. did at home. That accounts for some of it. Yeah. But this is drastic. Right. So, and it's the same number of games. And, it, I mean, a thousand yards yeah. more on the, on the road than at home is, is nutty. Yeah. So, it really, I think they got to get to the root of that. In terms of the personnel and scheme, no, I, we just got done saying, look how deep they are at all these different positions. I think, I think they're fine, of course. And you would expect a leap in year two of this system. You know, now that they know the system, now yep. that you know where you're supposed to be and you know your responsibilities, right? Isn't there supposed to be a leap in year two of a, of a system and a scheme, especially when you have all this continuity of most of the key right. guys back? And Hicks and Jefferson, at this point, are the only new yeah, guys on the, the defense. Lang- you know the language now. You know your responsibilities. It should be better this year. Yeah, I mean, listen, DeAnthony Bell sat right in this chair, or maybe it was a chair over, sat in that chair, and he said that next year we should be much better because it's year two. And I, like I said, I think the the biggest difference for me from last year and this past season was was Jim Jim Schwartz, not his new like new philosophy and whatnot or whatever they ran on defense. That's not what the biggest difference was. It was the mindset that he instilled in them. I thought that was the thing. The one thing, when you watch the Browns before last season, I didn't think that they were always the toughest team. I didn't always think that they had the best attitude. I always thought that sometimes, you know, like Pittsburgh and Baltimore would out physical them in games. This was the first year that I said, no, I think the Browns are the aggressors. They are the more physical bunch. And right. DeAnthony Bell confirmed that for me. And I'm okay with them running it back because I think now the body of these players are seasoned is the word. You know, when you the first time you go through something, you know, your body is that's different than what your body is used to, your body breaks down. And I think that's what happened over the course of this season. They weren't used to being the physical team. They were more of finesse guys. Now that they had to stand in there and be physical, their body started to break down. So when you got towards the end of the season, they started to run out of gas a little bit. I think now that they've been through it for 17, 18 games and they know the style of play, your body's used to taking that. They is used to being physical, that you'll be even healthier and be better later on for next year. So I think they will be better next year. I think that the pieces that they've gotten in there, although they're not the big splash moves that some people will want, I think they're productive the pieces that can still get the job done and I think that those numbers will be the same I think you added a pass rusher that's going to help get to a passer which is going to help lead to takeaways and turnovers for the secondary as long as these guys stay healthy they can continue being a top five defense every single season I agree with you guys I mean I'm I'm comfortable with essentially running it back and and I like the Jordan Hicks edition I like the Quentin Jefferson edition what do you make though Ty this like I know it's been a while we talked about it but Thinking back now, a couple months later, what happened in that game against the Texans? Like, how how was the defense that bad in that game? Well, DeAnthony Bell would tell you the same thing that everybody else tell yeah. you. They just had a bad day on the wrong day. I mean, when I look at it, I just think that I thought the Texans did a really good job. First of all, the pass rush didn't seem like it was there. No. You know, you thought in the playoffs they would turn it up a notch, and it was kind of like – I guess towards the end of the season, outside of Alex Wright, the pass rush really wasn't getting home like no. that. Well, so Miles got almost no sacks. Exactly. So yeah. it was like the pass rush kind of died down. And what happens when the pass rush down down? Now the secondary has to cover a little bit more, do a little bit more than they're used to doing. Mm-hmm. And I think the Texans was buying that extra second and scheming guys open on plays. And 
I just think the secondary wasn't used to doing that. They were used to, I, listen, I got to stay on my man for three to four seconds. By that time, the D-line will probably win and the ball will be out. And that wasn't the case with the Texans, and I think that that paid dividends, and that's why, you know, guys started getting beat on routes and stuff like that because it's just things we're used to. I always go to the play where uh, – where G knew got beat by uh, Nico Collins, and I right. broke it down. And I can't, I remember that he, there was a motion in the play by Nico Collins. G knew took his time getting over there, getting set. When you get motion in the NFL, you gotta get set now. Because if you don't, and you're still moving around, now you try, now you try to get set, and yeah. the guy's already gone. And I think he fell victim to that. Yeah. G, or in that play, Nico Collins ran a slugger, which is a slant and go. And, in G News' mind, if he runs a slant, you know, by the time he even thinks to run a go route, pass rush should be there. The ball should be out. He got to look away. Well, that pass rush didn't get there, so he got a clean go, and yeah. now it's a it's a big play. So I think that's ultimately to me it came down to the pass rush. You know, so many times, guys, we've had conversations in the last two months about you know on the offensive side and said, well. We could talk about wide receiver, whatever. The bottom line is, if Deshaun Watson doesn't play well, then it doesn't matter. To, to a lesser degree, but still a fairly high degree, I think it all comes down to to, to Miles Garrett, right? Like, what, are you insinuating that Miles Garrett is more important than Joe Flacco was back then? Uh, no. Yeah, yeah. the quarterback's always the most important. Stop player. it! Stop it! But no. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, for the first three quarters of the season. Even with the home and road splits, for the first three quarters or the first two thirds of the season, the defense was dominant almost every game, mm-hmm. um, and and that was because Miles Garrett was playing at an MVP level for the first two thirds of the season. Mm-hmm. The back end of the season, Miles Garrett was still okay, but he wasn't playing at that elite level at the end of the year. And if nothing else, he certainly wasn't getting to the quarterback. Mm-hmm. Now, you want to say there was more double teams and he was he was win- getting the pass rush win, whatever. The bottom line is he wasn't getting to the quarterback <laughs> at the end of the season, and the whole defense suffered for it. I mean, he's got to be great the whole season. I mean, he – and for the – Your pass- best players got – for the Browns, they have they – have, JLK is a very good player. Had a good year. Yes, he the did. Browns have two superstars on defense: Whoa. Miles and, De- and Denzel. Oh. That's it. I mean, J- no? JOK is trending in that direction. One more year, and you can put him in that. I'm about to say, he has he, he, I'm about to say what he was doing this year was unbelievable. But he's got to do it one more year. He, I agree. He I give you that. I give you that. Miles and Denzel Ward are elite level players. When they don't play elite, the Browns are not going to be as good. That's it. Your superstars. Got to play like superstars. Most, you know, you can get away with it when you play a crappy team and you can still win. But when you're playing other good teams, if your stars don't play like stars, more often than not, you're going to lose. And then and another thing in that game, you know, I, I also think that up until that, that, that playoff game, up until that point, the backups or the guys that came in were solid. They made plays, and it was unbelievable at yep. the, the rate that they were being developed right in front right. of our eyes. That playoff game, I remember Ronnie, Hick, Ronnie Hickman got beat yeah. and did some stuff in that game where it was like – it was almost like a, a – um, Jared Allen type thing where the lights kind of – was too big? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Like, it, it, they took advantage of a young player. And that's right. that's what you do. Like you get to there and you find the weakest link and you exploit it every time. You this is the guy that we're gonna go after. This is the guy that's gonna help us win this game. Mm-hmm. And they found him and they kept doing things and getting his eyes and he wasn't where he needed to be at times. And it just it just continued to make plays. So it was a point where they gotta stay healthy. You know, maybe if Juan Thornhill and and uh what's my Dale Pitt is playing, yeah. maybe those things don't happen. But you got to give the Texans credit. They they found somebody that they can take advantage of, and they did that. It was the speed of that game that was most jarring to me. The speed, the Browns looked so slow defensively. We talked about it before. The Titans, or the Texans' third string tight end is pulling away from these guys. It's like, what is going on? Mm-hmm. If you want to chalk it up to just a bad day, I tend to agree. I said at the time it was a bad day to have a bad day. But, man, that's the only thing, I guess, if I have to say – the question I have with running it back is on that turf, that defense looks so slow. 
and we'll have to wait and see if that happens again, and we'll and, and determine if it was just a bad day or if there was something more to it. If they're yeah, just I mean, not it's not like they've gotten any faster on the defense. No, they haven't. No. <laughs> I don't. They're not. I wouldn't say they slow. That day they were. That day, yeah, because that they tight were. when that tight end rolled on them like that, I couldn't believe. And it, it. wasn't just that. <laughs> I play, couldn't believe. It. But that was the most glaring. Yeah. And just being on that turf. It was noticeable. And I'm sure they had other games on turf yeah. last year that aren't that I'm not thinking of. Well, maybe moment, maybe and that's why you see them making some of the moves that they're making to get guys in there that maybe they can have more of a rotation so they can be fresher for down the line. Yeah. Right. Maybe that it maybe. also shows you how important home field advantage is. Uh, yeah. And it really is big. By the well, way, I gotta say, I still hate the new Browns logo. The the dog. Put, that, put it up again, there, Mike. Please, will you? Uh, yeah, Steve, go back to what we just had. Uh, the dog? I don't like it. I, it was that between that and the, uh, what was the other one? It was just a bunch of dogs, I think. I know, but it was another dog. and I, You don't That's, like that, huh? I just don't like that at all. What do you guys think? I know Jason doesn't care about such things. I yeah, I don't care. Yeah. I don't usually care about <laughs> such things. Do you, it, do, you, is, do you wear, like, brown hoodies and stuff? No, but I wear, I got my brown t-shirt I don't that I wear around my house. Unless it's given to It doesn't me. have I that logo. Not. Does anybody like <laughs> that logo? Man. Anybody? Any of you guys back there? Earl likes the logo. I like it. It's not my favorite. I'm more of an elf dude, but oh, the logo wow. is decent. Oh, I hate the elf. <laughs> oh, wow. I hate the elf. I I, it was funny. When they first put the elf on the field, whatever it was, a couple of years ago, yeah. I liked it. Because it was different. The elf. It was different. Nothing says intimidating like yeah, an elf. An elf, yeah. <laughs> Like, come on. Fair what, enough. What are we doing? All right. You got to read before we get to Flacco? I do. We're going to talk Joe Flacco after yeah. a quick reminder that you can now say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel is letting you bet on every game of the NCAA tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if their first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and bet on college hoops until they cut the nets down. Bull Joe Flacco is a member of the Indianapolis Colts. We found yeah. out this news just minutes after Jason Lloyd filed his initial column to the right. Athletic. And I wanted to make that very clear. Jason. Yeah, 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 terrible time to do the part. column. Bad day. I, I am. I'm excited for Joe. I'm glad he didn't have to sit around the whole year. He deserved. It was kind of looking like he wasn't going to get one. I know, but he deserved a yeah. job, and I'm glad he got it. And uh, it's interesting because obviously the starting quarterback in Indy, Anthony Richardson, missed most of the season yeah. last year. Uh, there's a lot of mixed feelings about Anthony Richardson. I. People are either love them or they, they hate them. Any, I thought it was pretty good. Anybody that loves them had them on their fantasy team. Well, I'm, you don't you don't think he's going to be a good quarterback, right, Richardson? I never said that. Oh, well, I'm asking you. I thought I remember you saying that, but I could be wrong. Um, when he first came out, or I didn't think that. I was like, I don't see it. Yeah. I got the big arm and the great speed. Okay, that's fine. But there's more to the NFL than that. And it's not like his numbers was great. He was a, he ran the ball and yeah. he threw the deep ball. That was about it. I think at some point in time it's going to catch up to him. He's got to stand in the pocket and he's, mm -hmm. he's learning that it, even though I'm 240, 250, I still need to get down. Right, so right. I think at some point if you make him play quarterback, that's the part that he got to develop. Improvise-wise, he runs out of the pocket and get those yards. He's like a young Josh Allen. He needs a coach that's going to critique yeah. him like – Dable deal with Josh Allen. That's my personal right. opinion. If he don't get that, I don't think he's yeah. a good quarterback. Uh, so anyway, what do you guys think about Flack? I mean, people are people are so the people that wanted Flacco back desperately are so worked up about this. I know. Jason. I know. <laughs> like, what were they expecting? I actually. I, you know what I realized? I, I didn't realize you, they're... You know why me and Jason, though? Because we sat here for months and yeah. told you oh, that it wasn't going to happen. It couldn't happen. I, but here's the thing. I, I'm fine with Jameis replacing Joe Flacco. I would have been fine if Joe Flacco was back. I don't think it's a, that big a deal who the backup quarterback is. I don't think the difference between Joe Flacco and Jameis is meaningful. Well, we live in the moment. I know that. Like, I know that. Last right. year, all these quarterbacks went down, and it was a big thing. How many True. times has that happened in, right. the, in and the 103 years of the NFL? Yeah. Not a lot. And you don't, and with very few exceptions, if your starting quarterback gets hurt, even if you make the playoffs, you don't win. That is, you know, we all could point to Nick Foles. I get it. It's rare. That's a. That's not the rule. That's the exception. What I, What I. What is baffling to me? 
is that, listen, I get it. There's some people that hate Deshaun Watson and will never like him. You're, we're all entitled to our own opinion. Fine. Okay. But you still, even within that world, have to be realistic. There were people, there are fans out there. I know it's not a lot of them. But there are, a, there are fans that think not only that Joe Flacco should be on this team, but that he should be the starting quarterback of this team. And to me, you're high-level insane if you do that. <laughs> I mean, that's just batshit crazy. It really is. There's some people in media, too. Like, I'm not going to no, call No, there's it. not. Who? Call them out. Name them right now. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. But... Text me. I'll name them. They're idiots. I don't care who they are. Might be a friend of mine. I don't know. Jay Crawford. Jay doesn't. No, Jay, 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 Jay does not talk about No one that works with us. So then call them out. Is I'll it a radio person? Uh, yeah, from my understanding, I read an awful announcing article. Yeah. On one media member, one radio personality. It was Grossy. I'll just say it was Grossy. Grossy said that he thinks Joe should be the starter. He, see, yeah. This is why I didn't want. This is why I didn't want to go there. This is why I didn't want to go. What did he say? Why? Who cares? I, I'm reading from an off. I didn't listen to the segment. Awful announcing is legit. Yeah. Awful announcing. No, you gotta read. You gotta. Here, hold on. You, read it. Can, don't call, fall for just click. Pull it up. I'll read you from the article. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> you gotta. You gotta read that yourself. I gotta read it myself. Clickbait is a thing. No, here, just you guys. What do you, what do you think about him getting more money, though? Steve, take the 195 okay. full. The guaranteed money for. I'm getting back to the, what you were saying. We will, no, we will. from that subject. But are, are you surprised that this is. So I took out Darnold and Minshew, who got more guaranteed money. Yeah. This is the guaranteed money for five quarterbacks who signed, presumably as quarterback twos. Are you surprised yeah. this is. Like, Drew Locke got more than both Flacco and Winston, Mariota got more than both. He's younger. Uh, QB two, though. Yeah, that, I mean, the top three, you know, but Jake, who, Jacoby Brissett, I mean, not. Who was Drew Locke back in the. I don't know. Where did he go? Daniel Jones. He should have gotten more. <laughs> a pair of scrubs. I don't like that quarterback room at all. No. That's he should have gotten more. That's going to be cause, awful Because he probably could um, take that spot. I tell you what, though, my boy Perry. My, really Pear, my boy Paris told me that. Then Danny Dimes is not as bad as y'all think. He actually he, is. I agree. Good. He's not that. Like bad. people say, like Danny Dimes was terrible. He said no. He actually is a really decent quarterback. I actually think he's in the Baker class. I really do. So he got potential I mean, to take it, off. It's easy to laugh at that now, but two years ago, uh, Daniel Jones had an excellent year. Yeah, Baker yeah. sucked. So, yeah. um, but to the bigger point here, yeah. I I think it does matter who the backup quarterback. Look at Deshaun's injury history. It matters. I don't mean it doesn't matter at all. Yeah. I mean, the, the difference to me between Flacco and Winston is, is I mean, negligible. I mean, Jameis is significantly younger. Yeah. We talked about it the other day. I think he fits what they want to do offensively better than Joe. I, you kind of gave me the stink eye. I'm not saying that he's – I didn't give you the stink eye. You gave me the stink eye. I'm not, I'm not saying he's going to run for 500 yards. But I gave you a stink eye because you said he was mobile. Yeah. Stop I, it. Stop he, it. Jameis has got he's a fat ass. A, Come on, let's go. He's not a statue. He's not Joe As someone with a fat ass, I could say that. Jameis has got a fat ass. Make sure you, Anthony, like, make sure you clip that. <laughs> like, P-H or F? That's, that's worse. No, a F. <laughs> that right there is worse than any quote that you got to be. Make it's, sure you it's going up. Don't put worry. it on the screen like you did me. <laughs> you could put a picture of Jameis' ass and my ass. Nobody would know the difference. Let's not do that. You just really, <laughs> yeah. you just really. All right, so I found, I found the, uh, do you want, a t no, I'll save the Guardian's news for after. We got a little bit of Yeah, I just saw that. Oh, what? It's well, not good. Save it, save it. Bo, let me read this. Oh, must be Gavin Williams, this. right? No. no? Um, this is from Awful Announcing, yeah. reporting on what Tony Grossi said on the radio yesterday. They always report on him because he says all kinds of stupid shit. Well, Ben Axelrod, who used to work here now, writes for right, Awful right, Announcing, right. so he's locked into the Cleveland stuff. Uh, and he may not be insinuating he should start without saying those words specifically, but you guys can take this how you want. <coughs> Quote from Tony Grossi on the Really Big Show Wednesday. I probably owe the Cleveland Browns an apology for this reason. I'm sorry I had so much fun watching this and covering this team at the end of the year. We're not supposed to do that. We were all supposed to be in mourning and bag the season. We weren't supposed to have such fun, Okay. That's the way I interpret this move. Shame on you guys for enjoying the fact that our starting quarterback we paid $230 million wasn't on the field. We want to win with him, not with anyone else. That's the feeling I get on this move. It's the fans' fault for finally having the joy of watching a quarterback make great throws and lead the team and get popular. So that's the feeling I get. That's my fault for finally enjoying what I was seeing on the field. 
I don't know that that means he's saying that Joe Flacco. See what I'm started. saying? It's clickbait. That's not fair. Click well, I, that's what I said. I, 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 <laughs> that's I, not fair. I, 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 exactly I don't know what really. the hell he's really saying there. I'm a Click. little confused. He, by want, that. he wanted Joe back, yeah. right? But like, he ain't saying he just. He start. like anybody else that wanted Joe back is making way too big a deal of it. The uh, the insinuation that a thirty a, a, a turning forty Joe Flacco would be able to capture the lightning in a bottle that was right. not as great as we thought it was because he still turned the ball he, over. He had a, a ton times. of interceptions. And his arm was terrific. His he had, arm was he had terrific. Great we love games. him. I don't want to say anything bad about Joe. Yeah. He was great. He did yeah. interviews. He was fantastic. Love him. He was great in that short stretch. But the odds of him being able to repeat something like that are are minimal. Yeah. I think everybody's just selfish. I, I really do. Um He's not going. He wasn't going to start over Deshaun. Like, no, of course not. No matter right. what happened, he was no, not. So why right. would you want to have a guy be miserable on the bench behind a quarterback that he's never going to play over? So put him. Anthony Richardson's coming off of his shoulder injury or whatever his injury was. I don't know if he'll be 100 percent healthy for the beginning of the season. Maybe he yeah. gets a moment where he could go in there. Or if case if he does bad, they can pull him, put a veteran in there. Like it's it's a. I think his chances of yeah. seeing the field is much more significant in Indy than in I Cleveland. I don't know about that. Deshaun's got had a lot of injuries the last couple of years. Yeah, he has. Um, the the thing that I. I mean, Jameis has been kind of a knucklehead in his career. Yeah, but by all accounts, he's really grown up. In well, has years. he? Because he changed his coach's play call to get a guy a touchdown. And Whoa, to I get no somebody a bonus? It wasn't a bonus. No, it was, it was, his, first it was his first touchdown. Oh, a I thought it was for a bonus. bonus. I actually, I actually kind of like that. I'll be honest. I like but if too. you're a coach, can you trust him? Yes. I don't know. I got that's the a fair question. I, I, but I, his I teammates of course, love your team. Of course, yes. Teammates love him. Yes, and that's the issue that I brought up with. And Flacco, the teammates love Joe too. And they did. They loved him too much. Some of them loved him too much, which is why he couldn't come back. That's the premise. Like everyone keeps saying, everyone keeps. When I say this, everyone yeah. says, "Well, then Deshaun should be tougher." And and I'm telling you, it's a Not locker. About it's a locker room yeah. issue more than it is a Deshaun issue. And if Deshaun had balled out in his two years here and put up monster numbers, oh, he would. It would he could probably bring Joe back. Yeah. But he hadn't played well in two years. He hasn't played well here. It's been erratic, inconsistent, whatever word you want to use. So that is what leads to the. It could just rot a locker room. This guy's been in them. He's the one saying it too. Like it, it's, it's an unnecessary problem that you're inviting in for not a very good right. reason when there's other guys yes. out there. My only issue with Jameis, yes, he's loved in the locker room and that's great, but if you're a head coach, can you trust him? I don't know what you can. Throws 30 interceptions. He's gotten better the last couple of years, but he's threw 30 interceptions. He's changing the play call at the end of yeah. a game when a game it's over to get See? a guy a touchdown where there's not a contract bonus involved. It's to get a guy's first touchdown. Uh, so of course your teammates are going to like him, but from a team perspective, from a yeah. head coach, front office, can you trust this guy if you need him? I don't know. I would, I would have preferred Listen, Jacoby Brissett. I have zero problem with that. I would have preferred Jacoby Brissett. Clearly, uh, yeah. Brissett wanted to go to New England. I think the Browns would have preferred Brissett. Yeah. He chose New England. <coughs> Fine. If they you look at Jameis' James. career touchdown interception, it's actually better than I thought it was. Well, yeah, it the, is. He had yeah. the uh, a couple of years ago, he had like 14 touchdowns and three picks. Yeah. I so think he has like 35 more touchdowns than picks, which, listen, his picks have been way too high in his career. Yeah. But it's not – there's some people that talk about him as if he has more picks than touchdowns in his career. He has career, 42 which, more touchdowns than interceptions. Okay, 22. No, 42. Listen, 42? 42. Okay. <laughs> this is a complicated thing. It's not just about Joe Flacco. Most of this is not about Joe right. Flacco. Right. This is about the fact that a lot of people don't like Deshaun Watson. And I get it. And most of those people would have come around had Deshaun Watson played well. Because everybody gets up up in arms, and I get it. What Deshaun Watson was accused of is awful. It's yeah, awful. Yeah. And I get, and people are not – I'm not going to kill somebody for thinking he did what he's been accused of. And I'm not going to kill anybody for thinking he didn't do it or whatever. Right. You, you believe whatever you believe because none of us know for sure. So what Deshaun Watson was accused of is awful. And Jameis has some of that in his background too. So people yeah, are like, we've already had to put up with this Deshaun. Now you're bringing in another guy who's a, que who's a questionable character in the same vein. And, like, I don't want to deal with that. And, and there's a component of race in this conversation. Yep. But ultimately, ultimately, this is about how Deshaun Watson plays. Deshaun Watson, for the most part, has been a – most part. Outside of the second half of the Ravens game, has been a massive disappointment in Cleveland. There's no other way around it. He has not been good here. And, and ultimately, the, the, the 40% of the fans that hate the fact that Watson is the quarterback, 
None of them are coming around. In fact, that number's growing yeah. because he hasn't played well. And if he plays well, then it goes away for most people, and none of this other stuff matters. Could you imagine if he throw, if they bring Flacco back and Deshaun throws two picks in the first half or three picks yeah. in the first half? There'd be people chanting for Flacco in the stadium. Jason, the Browns don't need that. You even, don't need that. Even without Flacco on the team, if that happens, they'll still be chanting for Flacco. <laughs> It's still going to happen. Not as many, but it still will happen. If we had Baker Bros, pissed. we have Flacco Bros or <laughs> Flacco <laughs> Fluffers. <laughs> it's it's wild, awesome. man. It's wild. All I know is, yeah. if y'all if people feel that way about if there is distractions and stuff that's going on with quarterback one, and then quarterback two has that. The only job is to bring Phillip back because Phillip has none of that oh going God. on and he wins games. Phillip's clean as a whistle. So bring Phillip back. Oh, Lord. Go Browns. He throws a lot of interceptions and no touchdowns, but, <laughs> <laughs> he, but he wins games. So. All right, but we yes. got some Guardians news to uh, break into the show with real quick. Steve, take tag. Board I don't think I want to know this. Uh, Daniel Espino, their highly touted pitching prospect, underwent I'm another sure. shoulder surgery yep. yesterday, this time to repair an injury to the shoulder yeah. capsule and rotator cuff. No set timeline for a turn, but we at least know he's not expected to pitch in 2020. Jeez. When was the last time he pitched? 2019? Yeah, well, no, he didn't pitch okay. last year either, right? Yeah, he didn't pitch last year. He hasn't year. pitched in years, I feel no, like. No, it was the year before. Was it really? Yeah. And then uh, the other one is Trevor Stefan. He's Trevor out for Stephan, the year. Trevor Stefan, yeah. He's yeah. out for the year? Yeah. Stefan. 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 will be undergoing right elbow surgery the next week or two. After his elbow discomfort persisted, yeah. it was determined that his UCL is not providing adequate stability, oh which caused more pain. No timetable for return yet. So for Trevor, the Guardi- he's out for the year. At UCL reconstruction, yeah. he's out for, for the, the Guardians year. this year, this means more. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Daniel Espino, at one point, three, four years ago, was the best prospect the Guardians had. Better than Bybee, better than Gary All these Williams. guys. Well, yeah. And now they've all passed him because yeah. he hasn't pitched. Yeah. He's, I, I wonder how many innings he's pitched in the last four years. I bet you not many. And Espino? so that's yeah. the, what's that? Yeah, Espino. Espino, Espino. I'll look it up for you. Yeah. But uh, yeah, how many innings has he pitched in the minors in the last bunch of years? I, I, I can't imagine he's pitched many. Uh, but for this year's team, he wasn't going to be a part of this year's no. team. So I, I don't care about it from that perspective. But I mean, at this point, you have to, I'm going to just assume he's never going to play in the majors. Well, I, well, I wouldn't he's go He's had like far. three surgeries. Yeah, well, I wouldn't go that I, the hope for me, the hope is maybe he can become a reliever. I think his days as a starter probably yes. are gone. As an effective starter, but, you know, maybe he can come back and be a one-two. Maybe he could be a closer, a one-two inning guy type thing. His stuff was just filthy. He's still only 23. And he was I, – I yeah. don't know if we talked about it. His arm – I almost wonder if he's too big. His arms are, like, that big around. He's got enormous biceps. That's, yeah. It's a frame that you don't normally see on a pitcher. And I just kind of wonder if, if his weightlifting has sort of contributed to some of these shoulder problems that he keeps having. He has pitched – 133 and two thirds of an inning in minor league baseball bowl. Yep, he but pitched, he hasn't. Yeah, he's, he's pitched. In, in, he did not pitch last year. He pitched 18 innings in 2022, and he, he pitched 91 innings in 2021 and none in 2020. So he's pitched about 110 innings in the last four years. That's not good. And and, and, and 91 years. of those 110. 20, 20, 22, 23, and 24, five, it'll be five right, years. Right. And, he, and basically four of those five innings he didn't pitch. Yeah. Was he a high draft pick right out of high school? I don't yeah. remember. Yeah, he was a first-round pick. Oh. Mm. But he's yeah, 24th been, overall, you're right. Yeah. He was throwing over 100 miles an hour at yeah. one point. And that, you know, I think this is his third surgery, like arm surgery. It's at least his second on the shoulder. Yeah. I don't know. If yeah. He had anything but anyway. He was up to, as I'm just looking at his uh, – Baseball reference, up to as high as the 16th best prospect in all of baseball yeah. entering the 2023 season. That was before right before the that he latest dropped. surgery. And <coughs> yeah, Major League Baseball dropped him from in their pre-season yeah. rankings. He was number 16 last season. He's down to 111 this season. That's yeah, I mean, considering with the injuries, the fact that he's still that high. But he was supposed to be one of the key pieces in the Sean Murphy deal potentially, right? Yeah, that's who they what's who they wanted. They was, traded him. Was well, it's easy to say that now. <laughs> I know, but, they but what if they traded Gavin Williams in that deal, and and then Espino goes down? Mm. Like he just well, mm. in the end, catcher's not a, a problem, or I don't think it's going to be a problem. So I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, that sucks. It, it sucks. Does, but the yeah. Trevor Stephan injury is big because he's a key part of their bullpen. Big part of their bullpen. Big uh, one of their late inning guy. guys. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, he's been a good reliever. Espino, and I, I obviously you know he's still young enough to come back, but. 
Do you think, like, this is kind of the end of the Espino era of him being an, an uber-level prospect? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's no way you can still have him and have expectations that he can no, be. No, no. Now he's a, a lottery ticket at this, at this point, point. right? You'd, I, I would convert him to being a reliever. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Make him a reliever. If you can, if you can I mean, he could be a dynamic closer. Yeah, because he could throw 100 miles back. an hour. Yeah. If, if, if that's he if he can still healthy. throw that hard. If he can still, and, yeah. You know, he can stay healthy. I, I, you know, we'll see. But, uh Anyway, that sucks, uh, but uh, I will leave that for now, Mike. What are we moving on to? We're going to play a new game in a sec, but I just I saw a tweet it. that blew my mind. Did you know Calvin Ridley and Amari Cooper are the same age? Yep. And one has significant better stats than the other one. By the way, speaking of which, that contract for Calvin Ridley, four years when it was 96? 92, 50 guaranteed. N- Absurd. 92. So Calvin Ridley just got, what, $23 million a year? It, the Titans don't make any sense. And the, what are the Titans? So the Titans have no quarterback. Is any, does anybody think Will Levis is going to be a good starting quarterback? Yep. You do? I think it would be decent. Now, if you believe in Will Levis, then I get it because you signed Tony. But Tony Pollard and Calvin Ridley are both towards the end of their healthy years. Like, like would you sign Amari Cooper to a four-year? No. Yeah, th- it's, they're the and same he's age. way better than Ridley. Like, Significantly but, better, yeah. Uh, what is Tennessee doing? You had A.J. Brown. Yeah. Wouldn't pay him. Right. But you pay Calvin Ridley? Well, yeah. it's a new GM. It, it does fair. make a difference. Yeah. But they thought, it's stupid is what it is. It's stupid. They thought it's that Traylon Burks would be A.J. Brown. They, this yeah. is, you know what they fell victim to? The same thing that Seattle fell victim to where they let all the L.O.B. go. They thought, you know what, our our scheme is better than the players. We'll just get a player that's similar to it, and yeah. it'll fit the scheme, and yeah. it'll be perfect. And then you realize that you actually need those type of Absolutely. players. Absolutely. So that's what happened. Yeah, there you go. I, I was stunned when I saw the mo- money on uh, Calvin Ridley. Yeah. Uh, any uh, Last thing on the division, the, did the Ravens or Steelers do anything in the last t- since we've been on? Not no. that we hadn't talked about yesterday. The Bengals re-signed your boy Von Bell. I'm excited about that, Tyvis. Did, yeah. he, did he text you back? Nope. What the hell's up with that? <laughs> See how they do you, man? You know what? It's messed they, up. They get big time out here. You know yeah. what he'll do? He'll text me back at like 4 o'clock. Sorry, yeah. bro. I had a lot of stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, right, right, right. Then he'll be like, how's the family going yeah. on? Like, he'll do something like that. The Bel- Bengals also signed Sheldon Rankins. It's a good pickup. Didn't he play for the Saints? No, the Vikings. Both. He did play for the Saints probably, last year's with the both. Texans, right? Texans, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are right, you guys ready to play a new game? Yeah. New game. Okay, so this is – everyone have a whiteboard. Everyone have a marker. Yep. This is a spinoff of True or False. Okay. It's called Judy or Hicks. I'm going to give you a statement about one of the Browns' two new marquee signings. By the way, Jason officially I, I, sighed already. I hate this And game. you guys have to tell us if this is something that is about Jerry Judy with Hicks or, or with Hicks. Jerry Judy. Okay. So it's Hicks or, Hicks or Judy. Okay. Oh, these are football Choose your side. Stats. All right, you ready, Steve? Hit the music. How can they be football be stats? Pretty easy one, if they're football stats. That's what I was plays saying. Wide, <laughs> one plays my point. Uh, I, got, I got creative on these. Okay. Oh, God. Blank. I'll say who for these. Who was the number five overall recruit in this high school class? Mike loves the overall recruit questions. Is that Jerry Judy or is that Jordan Hicks? For the record, these are not going in the official true or false scores. So, Tyvis, don't worry if you lose, which you will. (laughs) (laughs) Anthony is hilarious. I couldn't even hear Anthony. Anthony said this will not count in the true or false You don't need to hear him. It will not well, it's not true or false. We can set this as a separate I mean, game. It's kind of true or false. It's two options. We have two Judys and a Hick. <laughs> and the answer. <laughs> what did I say? Two Judys and a Hick. You said Hick. Hicks. Oh, Hick. <laughs> oh, whoops. 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 <laughs> uh, well, Tyvis, you're right. Tyvis, you're is a Hick, Hicks. apparently. <laughs> sorry. No, sorry. Listen, See, I should have known that. Listen, the man with the Texas out of Ohio, I, he had to be really good. Here, I, I, Not saying that Ohio football is bad because Ohio football Mike, is top five for sure, but it was just shocking to see a kid go from Ohio to Texas. So. That's a good point. I didn't think about that. I apologize if I offended anyone that I thought I said By calling time is a hit. All right, next up. <laughs> Who wore a camouflage suit on the day he was drafted? Jerry Judy or Jordan Hicks? You always assume that's like the... the white right guard that's wearing the camouflage suit. Uh, um, 
Tyvis says Judy. Can I change my answer? You can. I can? Yeah, if you want. I'm going to let it ride. Bo also says Judy. I think I really Yeah, I'm going Judy. I think you can't read my writing, but I'm Judy going Judy. Three for Judy's. The answer is Jerry Judy. He wore a camouflage suit. Jordan Hicks went with the Texas burnt orange, in case anyone was wondering. Mm. Question three. Which one made their conference honor roll seven times? Jerry Judy or Jordan Hicks? Judy went to Alabama. Hicks went to the University of Texas. Neither known for their education. <laughs> I actually don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> I just assume everybody in Alabama is stupid. Which is really unfair, but... Yeah. Mike, I mean, look who they voted for for Congress. What's his name? The football coach is, is a senator there, isn't he? Tommy Tuberville. Tuberville. Yeah, I mean, that guy's just, you know, he's dumber than my underwear. <laughs> well, Three I'm, duties. And if uh, we're going off this question, then, boy, you're also dumber than your own underwear. The answer is Jordan Hicks. <laughs> Jerry Judy only played three years at Alabama. He was only in college for six semesters. It's oh, impossible for him to have seven mm. honor rolls. Jordan Hicks played five Thank years God. at the University I of Texas. these things through. Was a all Big 12. I hate this game. Academic honor roll seven times. Good for him. I Next question. Through. Question number four. Who received votes for the freshman of the year in their respective conference? Only one of them received votes for freshman of the year. Was it Jerry Judy or was it Jordan Hicks? I think I've answered Judy for every question so far. We have two answers for Jordan Hicks. Bulls going with Jerry Judy. The two of you guys are right. It oh. was Jordan Hicks. The SEC Jerry is Judy. pretty, uh, con pretty competitive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Judy's playing much as a freshman. Judy was an All-American his sophomore and junior season. It's the SEC. Was not you know, hey. a big-time guy as a freshman. <laughs> It could be Plus, if Hicks was top seven recruit coming out of high school. Yeah, he should have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and score logic. update through halfway through. Tyvis is in the lead with three. Jason has two. Say that one more time, one. Anthony. Where am I? But I can the change lead, the score. Tyvis. By the way, we need to play a game. The best game we play here, I think, is keep cut or trade or whatever. We can know? pull that. We can bring that back out. We need to bring that back soon. I, that's my No, that. we need to schedule me on a day where I'm on with Jay Crawford and we need to play true or false because it haunts me that he won the last time. Mm. It really does. I can't even be with my wife at times because I think about Jay Crawford winning that true Just or put false your sack. Quote that. <laughs> Quote that. It's sad. It, it haunts me. Uh, question number five. <laughs> Who wears a Star of David necklace, even though they're not Jewish? Star of David. What? <laughs> One of these two wears a Star of David necklace. Hell no. Even though they're not Jewish. Who did you say? Eh, you're probably, probably right. <laughs> One for Judy, one for Hicks, two for Judy. The answer is Jerry Judy. Yeah. He actually caught some flack for this at the NFL Combine when asked about it. He said, my nickname's Jew, so I wear a star of David necklace. <laughs> True story. I don't, have a, I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> That's funny. Nah, I got a problem with that. Uh, all right, what's the score? And score update. Jason and Tyvis are tied with three. Bull, you have two. I have said Judy to every question so far. <laughs> you have. So far has not been a successful strategy. It is not. I'm not question. doing it on purpose. It's just... <laughs> question number six. Who credits yoga for their ability to change direction and bend, le bend their legs in unique ways? Which one is a yogi? I had to dig deep for some of these. I couldn't do any football stats because it's very obvious. Mm -hmm. uh, one for Judy, two for Hicks. The answer, Jerry Judy. Oh, Big yogi. Yeah. Jason takes oh, the lead. Oh, so Jason likes the yeah, game. Yeah, I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> there are two more. Two more. All right. Number seven. Who had a 10-foot-4 broad jump at the combine? The other had a 10. Oh, so that's 10 lame. Four? Who had the longer broad jump? Who had the longer broad jump? I got to ride it out. <laughs> I got to ride it See, one. I should just match your answer and guarantee myself Tyler a win. Tyler says Hicks. Jason says Judy, Bull says Hicks. You can win it right here. If it's Judy, it's over. The answer, Steve, is Jordan Hicks. Ah! He's gave a three-way tie heading into the last question. No, it's not no, a three-way tie. I'm, I'm one back, right? 
Yeah, Bull has three. The other two have four. Okay. So I, if I if I have a different answer than the two of them, it's tied. And I'm right. It's a three-way tie. Last right, one here. NFL.com scout Lance Zerline describes who as quote plays more linear than fluid coming out of college. This is oh the worst God. question ever. That was desperation, Mike. That was shit. I only got seven questions. What the hell do I come up with an eighth question? <laughs> oh, more linear than fluid. Cause it's like a, it's, it's common sense, but like. <laughs> Mike changed his mind on true or false like two, three. We were gonna do true or false on Jordan Hicks, and I was like, ooh, we could do Hicks or Judy. Wait a minute. I don't know, cause it's like when I read that, like it's only one person's name, but Mike would know that I would know that. Mm. So he would definitely put this question because it probably caught him at like. Maybe it's not ah. so bad, bull. I got Tyvis in a pickle. Yeah, you do you? because it's like. Well, what do you got, Tyvis? I'm scared to flip my board. <laughs> Cause like it's the obvious answer, right? But, but Mike knows that I would. You know what? <laughs> Mike knows that I know that All that right, would Jason. be too obvious. Receiver is the obvious way to describe that. <laughs> I so can't I went win. Hicks. They have different answers. I went Hicks. Judy. So if it's Judy, Tyvis wins. If it's Hicks, Jason wins. Yeah. Anthony, can I get a drum roll, please? Steve, take it. Tyvis. Jason, you disappoint me. Oh! <laughs> Jason, I finished tied for second. Ah, what? That, you, that's crazy. You read that and thought line. Or you, no, I read that and thought receiver. No, I read that and I thought linebacker. I thought receiver. Because like a linebacker, like, you know, why would he? No, actually, that's a lie. I read it and thought receiver. receiver. But then I was like. Mike's trying to trick you. Yeah. I, I, I thought we try to get in Mike's head sometimes. So I went linebacker. There's not that much in Mike's head. <laughs> Stupid <laughs> game. Man, that way it made it all the way behind the screen. You know, the crazy thing, it, it, that, that win don't even feel good. Jay Crawford not here. I needed Jay to, to be disappointed. All right. Do you know what win did feel good? The Cleveland Cavaliers vote racing the New Orleans Pelicans last night, guys. That in my opinion, <laughs> in Donovan Mitchell's return to the court, yeah. The Cavs put together their most complete and arguably their best overall game of the year. Before we talk about the game, we got to talk about the fact that Donovan Mitchell played. Uh, Jason, where did this come from? There was no talk. It felt like we weren't going to see him for a while. No, I, I didn't think he'd play last night, but yeah. I thought it was. With, oh, so you thought it was close. Well, yeah, we said the other day within a week, right? I didn't remember you guys saying You that. said within yeah, we a said week, within, too. I didn't think it was going to be Thursday. I didn't though. think it would be. I thought it was either Sunday Because we talked about the Cavs yesterday during, you know, the last 20 minutes of the show, and nobody said, I wonder if Donovan Mitchell plays tonight. When I when I seen that let them know tweet, I said, really? I did not think, because I I was thinking off of what you said. You said he'd be playing sometime next week. Yeah, within a week. I mean, it wasn't like he was great out there. You could tell he's trying to get back in time. Yeah, you could tell. I think the highlight of the night is the reemergence of Mikey McNugget's favorite player, Sam, Sam Mr. Merrill. You got 50%? 5 of 10 from 3, yeah. Mikey. Your and guy's nine back. Assists, career high 9 assists. Not just a shooter, a yeah. playmaker. The Cavs had 3 guys with 9 or more assists. First time in franchise history. Is it really? I was about to say, how often does that happen? Well, they was hitting Trey because when I looked at, ha- I think it was halftime. They, I think Donovan made four, Darius yeah. made four, and Sam made four. Darius had a great game. He was four assist, uh, four rebounds away from a triple double. Yeah. Yeah, he played tremendous. The whole team played. I mean, it was a great game. It's one because- of the most impressive stats of all time. It is just the eighth time in the history of the NBA. Yeah. The history of the NBA that a team has won a game with three or fewer free throw attempts. Really? I didn't even realize they had that few. They had, and their first free throw attempt didn't come until the fourth quarter. They outshot the Pelicans from three. 20 makes to four makes. Yeah, the Pelicans couldn't hit anything. Valanciunas was awful last night. Zion was doing his thing, though. Zion was good, and then uh, uh, what's his name? Had a good Brandon game. Brandon Ingram. Right. That well, was when you it. outscore they, your opponent by 48 from beyond the arc. You're going to win that game. You're going to win that game. They shot 20 of 45 from three, 51% from the field. Their defense was tremendous. They put the pressure on 
uh, New Orleans in the backcourt, and offensively, just the pace they were moving. I don't know if you guys noticed, but the ball didn't sit in anyone's hands for more than two, two and a half Love seconds it. at all. Ball movement was great. They yeah. were running sets on the weak side. We talked about that yesterday, but it wasn't just Garland in those right. crunch situations. Let's get a little more movement. I don't know what got into him. I'm not sure if it was just Mitchell being back, but everything clicked le- together last night in a way we hadn't seen yeah. in about six, seven well, games. Well, that's how you end up with three guys with like 30 assists between them. I, guys, I thought it was like, you look at the stat sheet after the game, and it was like everybody that played was a factor in every aspect of the game. Like, there were a lot of guys with four or more rebounds. Mm-hmm. There were a lot of guys with four or more assists. What, did they have seven players score at least 14 points or six, something like that? I mean, it was just a really – it yeah, was a really players. well-balanced game, and every it seemed like everybody played. I think Okoro was the only guy that didn't have a really good offensive game, but everybody else was hitting their shots. <laughs> oh, no, uh, Kat, uh, Levert didn't have a good game offensively. He had nine assists, though. Like, he was right, just scoring. I mean, he yeah. didn't have a good game. Well, right? it, 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 but that's it. Like, everybody – it was like a – it was a really – it was a great game. Like, it, right? it made me come, It made yeah. me think about uh, Jason – Say, I wanted to know after watching that performance, after just that one game performance, what's your closing game lineup again? I said, what did I say? I said Donovan, Struess, Isaac Wade, and Allen. Isaac Wade and Allen. Are you still sticking with that? I still don't want Darius. And it seems like Darius plays better when Donovan's there. Who you look? What you been looking at? Yeah, that's okay. not- <laughs> what game have you been looking at? Mike, hasn't he played better in closing moments with with Donovan there? Yeah. Oh, in closing, in closing moments, but it's yeah. yes. overall game. Say that. So, yeah. I should have clarified. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have a month to go. Yeah. The question was that was other day how they're playing right now. In right. that moment, that's what the lineup would be. Now, we got a month to see. We got a month. We got yeah. a month for Darius and Donovan to play together and see how it looks. But I mean, who are you taking off the floor? I guess. I, if you want to go big or small off the five that I said, you take, you take Dean off and you yep. go small and put Darius on. I mean, in a perfect world, Darius is in that five because he is their second best player. Absolutely. Yes. And so if they can, you know, put it together, together in this last month, then in a perfect world, you'd have, <laughs> you'd have Darius in instead of Dean Wade. I mean, it, or Struess, I guess, if you want Isaac, if you want to go defense right. and shooting. But they, they cannot – I think it's clear – I mean, we don't know when he's going to be back anyway, but it's clear they can't have Allen and Mobley on the court together at the end of the game. I How many games does Tristan got to go? He's close. Yeah, but even still, you're not playing him. I know, but I just want – he needs some minutes. He, I he, need to see what he is. He yes. can help them in a playoff series. I need to series. know sure, what he is. He can help them. He needs to help them. Off the juice. I need it's to, funny when he's he not on the juice. The no, no chance. Yeah. I, when they signed him, I was like, well, he's Robin Lopez. Like, he's yeah, the right. locker room guy. He'll, he's not going to play. You got to see him. How many more stuff? games left you're, on you're his right. suspension? <laughs> right. uh, what was he? He's, he's, back, he's back really it's soon. I remember right when I wrote it, it was mid-March he was coming back. Okay. So, it's right around now. Maybe this, I felt like the 17th or 18th he was eligible to come back. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Cause that today's was a great already game. What, what, what did you think, Jason, what, overall? I mean, this is what happens when your star comes back and yeah. you inject some life into energy into a team that was scuffling yeah. a little bit and they needed it. They had some really good wins without them, some really good wins without them, and they had some clunkers without them. So yeah. the high tide raises all boats, and Donovan came back, and, and the, the level of play of everyone else increased and improved. Mike, what's their upcoming schedule the next few games? For the it's Cavs? still tough. I mean, they got a, a gauntlet. They've got through the majority of the tougher games, but coming up they have – uh, the Rockets tomorrow night, then the Pacers, then the Heat, then the Timberwolves, and the Heat again. Isn't then they the have Rockets, a two-game nothing. Rockets are feisty. Didn't there be uh, – what's yeah, his name? Sanguin? Sanguin just Isn't got he hurt. hurt. He's out. Yeah, he's, he's out. Yeah, okay. But then they have after two games with the Hornets, the Sixers, the Nuggets, the Suns, the Lakers, the Clippers. Like, they're, they're not out of this yet. They still got a uh, well, tough stretch. I mean, but they're hanging in. I guess that's yeah. good. I mean, is it good to be playing good teams right now? Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, you want to be playing Absolutely. good teams. It's March. Play, you know what are we? What are we learning when they play the Pistons or the Nets? No, I mean, this is March, and you're ramping yeah. up, man, for for what's to come. You yeah. want to you want to play good teams late in the year and, right. see, and see where you're at. They better be Houston, especially with us. They they need to win that game. I believe the They're Cavs are at the moment tied for the second spot. Yeah, they are. They're tied. Yeah, and I think Wash uh, uh, Milwaukee plays Philly. I believe tonight. I did not look. I don't know. I think I remember seeing that. Yeah, they're tied for second. The Knicks are three and a half games back. The Magic are four games back. 
and the Sixers are five and a half games back. They're still in very good shape to at least finish as the third seed, I think. Yeah. I mean, three games at this point of the year is, is pretty significant. <laughs> it's not uncatchable, un, uh, but it's, it's, I got it's a, significant. I got a question, and I'm, I feel like I'm being bullied. What do you do to bullies? Punch them in the mouth. face. So you telling me it's perfectly okay for me to get up and go back there and slap and punch McNuggets and Anthony in the face? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> what we do? Bring it. Because I'm sick of... Because I'm on the internet. Yeah. I'm on social media for stuff that I said. Yeah. But Bull has said wild outlandish stuff today, and I have not seen Bull's it. Awesome. I haven't seen it on this screen. I haven't yeah. seen it on the internet. But, uh, hey, but Tyler, my stuff the does go there. Twitter 28 minutes ago. I'll DM it to you, buddy. What did, what got, what did I say that was outlandish? You, uh, James has a fat ass. <laughs> oh, James has a fat ass? <laughs> There we go. I just went there. <laughs> we were saving it for the end of the show, Ty. Whatever. So we're saving it, Ty. Whatever. Yeah. Don't be so sensitive. I'm just saying. Man. I'm just saying. I got people. Make, I got people texting. People are texting want. me now. Yeah. Like what you? They asked me that I bump my head today. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, if you would have been paying attention to the conversation, you yeah. wouldn't have thought about it. Well, the point of it was it was taken out of context. Yes, right. Just text them back and say, thanks for watching. That's it. <laughs> well, they didn't watch it. They just seen the tweet. That's, That's it. That's the joke. That's the joke, Tyvis. Well, like, tell them to watch the watch show watching. and shut the F up. You right. know what I'm saying? Maybe don't say that. Uh, that's not. Uh, overall, no, that's guys, exactly though, how I would say. Considering it. <laughs> the offensive output, the defensive output, yeah. the quality of the opponent, the Pelicans had won four in a row. They're one of the better teams in the West. Yeah. Do you guys think, and I know it's hard to think about every win, they've won 42 games now, but is that their best one of the season? No. Nah. No, the Boston game. I was about to say, what? No. They okay, can... maybe not best win, best performance. Oh. Okay. I, I should phrase it like that, the best best performance. As, a team, is... as a team, yes. yeah, it's yes. up there. The, the, the Boston one was all Dean Wade's second half heroics. Right. As a team. Not even second half, just fourth quarter. Yeah, I guess you got a point And same there. with the Mavs, <laughs> Max Strews going crazy. Right. Yeah. That, that's why I was, I, win was the wrong word. Yeah. Best performance is what I was going to say. As a team, one of the yeah, best. I mean. Off the top of my head, can and, you think of a better performance? You would like them to continue. I mean, they played really well the entire game. It wasn't like, oh, they had to make a comeback. Or right. Any, like, they, they got a big lead. And they, you know, in other games, they've had some big leads. Against Phoenix, they were up, right? And they let the game get away. Mm. Uh, in this case, they took that commanding lead, and they never – like, how close did the Pelicans even Pelicans get? Pelicans got it to a seven-point game – or six-point game in the second quarter, and then it was right. – And was then over. they ran it up big, and yeah. then that was that. And, and it was, was even crazy because guys like Damian Jones, like – Balled last night. He had 14 points. Yeah. Jason, I know you and I have been sitting at games before, and we're looking at the bench and like, man, they miss Tristan Thompson. Damian yeah. Jones can't really be the guy you rely on. But last night, he kind of shut me up. Uh, it was one night. Good game. But I'm not counting on him in the playoffs for anything. You can't. No, I'm, I, I agree. I'm just saying. Yeah. Like, but it's maybe the G League play. playoffs. <laughs> it was a good game for him, though, for sure. Yeah. All right, Mike. What else we got on the Cavs? I do have one more question for the Cavs, guys. Do yeah. you think – and the obvious answer is yes, because what we saw last night. But even at, what would you say? D Donovan was 70% Donovan last night, 60%? Yeah, yeah right? something like that. What does just getting him back on the court do for the other nine guys who play? Like, just knowing guys? they have Donovan on the court, back kind of in the trenches with them. Uh, that's why I said earlier, uh, high tide raises all boats. And that, was, that felt like a prime example of it. even though he wasn't at his best – just having him out there injects a little bit of life and, and some energy into this team, and we know how much they've come to rely on him. And I've said thousands of times, you can't always rely on him, but last night was, it doesn't mean you can't ever rely on him. Right. And, and last night felt like a, a moment where he just really provided some energy and juice into a team that probably needed it. Tyus, what do you think? I mean, his presence on the court, obviously, he got the locker room one over. They know who he is. Um, you know, when he's out there, you know, you need to be at your best. You know, he's going to set you up. Guys, it, it's, it's going to take the attention of defense, which means that my opportunities is going to be more open than when it's just Darius, you know. So I think that they were jacked up for him being out there. And, yeah, like you said, he does bring that energy. I mean, you see that let him know, and you know he's the heart and soul of that team at times. It, it just makes everybody play better, and that's what you want. That's the point of a superstar, to raise the play of everybody else, and that's what happens when he's on the court. Yeah, I mean, it was really exciting to see him back on the court. 
the key now for the Cavaliers is, you know, as they have all these banged up guys, including Donovan, who clearly wasn't 100% yesterday, is getting them healthy and ready. Yeah. I mean, part of winning in the playoffs is being the team that can survive all the injuries. Yeah. Especially in recent years, it seems like so many teams get big injuries and that just, you know, seals their fate. And, you know, who knows how far the Cavs can go. Who is they, if they, if playoffs started today, who are they playing? The, they're Pacers. technically ahead of Milwaukee for the two seed, so they'd play the winner of the first playing, or the second playing spot. Yeah, okay. yeah. No, the first playing Second, the first the seven eight yeah. winner. It, yeah, I said the first is in like the higher. So who's the seven eight team? Indiana right? Miami right now. So whoever won that game would play the Cavs. I'd rather. I'd I don't want to see Miami. I was about to say I'd rather the Pacers. Pacers. But Philly's also lingering there at six. Yeah, Philly's right, tied right with in Indiana, by the way. So they're all. Cl- We're not going to know who they're going to play probably until the, the last, last couple last days. couple yeah. days. Yep. It's you, Jason, real quick before we move on, do you think there's any chance? And we've seen it happen in the Western Conference way more than the Eastern Conference. But teams in the 2 3 4 spot, I'm not saying tank, but certainly give some guys some rest to get a preferable matchup in the first round. Is there any chance the Cavs, like, is there one team you circle as, hell, if we could find a way to play Team X in the first round, it's worth maybe sliding from the 2 to the 3 or the 3 to the 4? No. Orlando? Be, Orlando would be the one, but, I mean, you can't. I'm not sliding to the four to play Boston no, in the first round. Yeah. No, and and second round. Second. That's quite a slide because they're. I mean, the Cavs are in no position to, to like be cocky about what. Well, that, that, that's kind of what, what I was spot asking, they're going to yeah. be, and that's crazy. I mean, the 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 teams down there. This is why the East is is so hard right now because of all the teams. Orlando, you'd feel good about that matchup. Indiana, you'd feel good about that matchup. Although Indiana can score, they're fast and they can score. But Miami, Philly, would you really feel good about playing either one of those in the first round? I wouldn't. Well, unless Embiid's not playing. He'll be back. Embiid, he'll be back. He's definitely month. back. Yeah, he'll, he'll be, be back. back this month. So, uh, it's it's hard. Yeah, no, I don't want to play Embiid with uh, Philly with Embiid. And I don't know that they, they're not in position and that these teams are so jumbled, you can't really manipulate yeah, right. the standings you to try and catch it. one because... That's something that you'd only probably consider maybe like it's the last game of the season. Yeah. And if you win it, you play one team and you lose that game, you play another. Maybe there's something to that I, there, I think, but that's not like a series of games. I think it's really important for this team to go for that two seed. Yeah. And have home court, catch the playing team. Um, and then would have home court and have in theory court, in the next round. Have home court all the way up yeah. to the conference Even finals. though they've been much better this year on the road. Yeah. Last year they were ass on the road. This year they've been one of the you best s- in the league. It's different in the playoffs. Yeah, though. you're right. You want that crowd 100%, at home. 100%. All right, Mike, get one more read. I got one final read. And to help me with this read, I'm going to bring in Earl the Pearl because his show, the Ultimate 216 show, is on at 5 o'clock today. Earl, what can the people here later today. Ultimate 216 show coming at you live at 5 o'clock, episode 7. It'll be me. I'll be joined by Quincy Carrier, you all's favorite uh, Browns podcast and host. Uh, we'll be talking about the moves that the Cleveland Browns has made over the first four days, talk about a sleeper move that the Browns still could make, touch on the Cleveland Cavaliers a little bit, and of course wrap up with a little Q&A. So make sure y'all tune in. 5 o'clock today, Ultimate 216 show. Bold, we have plenty of time to talk a little Nick Saban, we have the clip if you want us to set it up yeah. with the clip. But I know this kind of ruffled your feathers. This, this pissed day. me off when I heard. And, and whenever I hear coaches uh, complaining about NIL or the transfer portal, I get fired up. <laughs> and I don't know where the, what, this must have been that in Congress. He was speaking to Congress. Okay. Sit, he's no sit, idea why, but he was sitting next to, to one of my all-time favorites, Ted Cruz. Um, and so here, this is Nick Saban talking to Congress. I, why are they talking to Congress? Like, like our Congress is a disaster <laughs> across the board. They get nothing done, and yet we're wasting time talking about NIL with a, a millionaire coach. But okay, here we go. <laughs> this is what Nick ha- Saban had to say, and he's got a tough life. So let's hear his, his tale of woe. Of all the things that I believed in for all these years, fifty years of coaching, no longer exist in college athletics. So it's always was about developing players. It was always about uh, helping people be more successful in life. Uh, my wife even said to me, we'd have all the recruits over on Sunday uh, with their parents for breakfast. And uh, she would always meet with the mothers and uh, talk about how she was going to help and uh, impact their um, sons and how they would be well taken care of. And she came to me, you know, like right before I retired and said, why, why are we doing this? 
And I said, what do you mean? She said, all they care about is how much you're going to pay them. They don't care about how you're going to develop them, which is all what we've always done. So why are we doing this? Well, all the things that I believe. So, first of all, isn't it awkward how close they're sitting to each other? Why are they sitting so close together? It's a little weird. Uh, I, I, I've already talked about this on Twitter, and I'll talk about it again, but you guys haven't reacted to it at all yet. What did, what did you think of those comments? Go ahead. You played. I mean, yeah, the game's changed. NIL changed everything, yeah. but you got to think. Um, the reason that they asked that is because everybody's not going to go pro, you know, and they – until a lot of those kids, you know, yes, everybody's dream is to go play professional football, but the reality is everybody's not good enough to do that. So they're going to maximize their one potential of doing that in college. You know, the NFL for them is college. So that's why they're going to maximize that there. Is it right? Probably not. I always say you need to go to the place that's going to develop you, but I also know that if you go, every, if everybody went to Ohio State and every Ohio State had everybody, everybody ain't gonna play. So it's like you know you got to figure out those things. Um, but yeah, it's definitely different. I mean, that's the first question they want to know how much I'm gonna get paid. But the development part, they're assuming that's going to happen. That's why they're coming to you to begin with. If they choose to go, if they went to Wyoming, yeah, like that's totally different. Alabama, I know you're gonna develop me and get me there. I just want to make sure that I can get the best of both worlds. I can get paid. Maybe I'm not going to get paid as much as Wyoming will offer me, but I'm going to get something that can at least keep me secure. So I think that's why that's the first question on their minds. I do think that they need to – they got to get some guardrails on this. Why? And because even in, when you go pro, you have a contract of two or three years. You can't just every year jump from school to 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 school. You get three transfers. Why? You, you, Coaches can do it. But do they? No. Uh, no, no. No coach Coaches jumps. leave without any any. Yes, they do. But they don't do it year to year to year to but year to year. But they could. I think, but they don't. Okay. And players do. Yeah. And it's it. they are ruining. This is going to ruin college football if they don't figure this out. And I'm all for playing the players. Don't misunderstand. Yeah. But they have to have some sort of commitment in this or skin in the game in this because – it is the wild, wild west right now. And, and you're seeing it when coaches, when Saban retires, when a head coach leaves that sitting active head coaching spot to go be a coordinator somewhere else, that is wild. And this is coaches saying, we can't, we can't do this system. And I don't know that necessarily that's all bad because I do think it was rigged in their favor for too long. 100%. But yeah. now it has swung the other way to the point where there has to be some sort of happy medium in this where it, you can't just jump from school to school to school to school to school and, and, and enter the transfer portal because yeah. the coach pissed you off. I, like, I, there has to be some sort of balance here. I would love to know how many kids have switched schools, like, have gone to three schools in three years. Like, if, there's a, if that's a high percentage. I don't know if there's any way we would know that. I Certainly, don't know it's not something you can figure out right away. Do we think there's record, a high percentage of players that have switched schools twice in three years? I, I'll, I'll try to look that up, but I do know for a fact. Yeah. 2022 entering 2023 was the most players ever in the transfer portal. And 2023, entering 2024 now, broke that record. So the okay. last two seasons since NIL has been... But it could be all different kids. I mean, I don't know. No, but I'm just saying the transfer yeah. portal is now being used and utilized more than Right, that we fast. know. But here's what I'd say to this. Okay, when I, I, I had a very nasty response to this on Twitter because this is a very deep subject. Okay, and there, there is um, a lot of things that go into this. And... I, I find it funny that in baseball, in hockey, in tennis, in track, in all these other sports, they can make money at the very least once they're done with high school. And in a lot of cases, like golf and tennis and other sports, they can start making money at essentially any age if they're good enough. Meanwhile, in football and basketball, you have to, it's it's always been at basketball not always been but it's it's at least a year before you can make any money unless you go overseas and in football obviously it's 3 years and you know why is it only football and basketball that people are all worked up about there's a lot of reasons there but what pisses me off so much about the arrogance of Nick Saban is to say, well, all these kids care about is the money. I'm sure that's not true. I'm sure it's not only about the money. But even if it is, who cares? They're 18 years old. When Nick Saban makes his, his Aflac commercials 
with Deion Sanders. Is that all about developing kids? How's he developing kids, Mike, when he's doing Aflac commercials? Does he need that money? He's making $8 million a year. He's probably the highest paid person in that bum-ass state of Alabama. And it's a football coach. What he's doing is not really that damn important. Okay? And I'm sorry that the kids want money when they come over to his palatial estate when they made him breakfast. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure Nick Saban was sitting in front of the griddle making French toast and eggs. Maybe, you know, he has 13 servants probably working on it there. The, the kids can make as much money as they want. You want to say they gotta, there's got to be a commitment of a certain amount of years after the first transfer? I got no problem with that. It is stupid if kids are going to four different schools, five different schools in five different years. That's not good for the kid in, the, in reality. It's not good for anybody. I don't, they should make as much money as they can. I don't want to hear about the money aspect of this at all. And that's, by the way, we, we throw those things in together, Jason, the money and the transferring. And they're two separate issues. Yeah. Because Saban didn't talk about the transferring. Now, I'm sure he's pissed about that too. But all he talked about was the money. And I don't care. Who gives a shit? It's been ridiculous that that's been the rule. That kid's got a, a bagel and cream cheese and they got suspended. That they couldn't make a single dime off, the, off their name while, while this guy's making $8 million a year doing commercials and he's a big shit on top of the hill. I mean, that's absurd. You know, and, and by the way, Tyvis, correct me if I'm wrong, when you get a scholarship to Ohio State, that's not a four-year scholarship. That's a one-year scholarship that the coach can get rid of you anytime they want. Isn't that true? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so. But they don't. They don't. Unless yeah. you do something pretty egregious. They don't cut kids off the back end of the roster? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. You, and, unless you really you gotta do, do yeah, something. Yeah. You got to do. If you want kids to say, okay, after one transfer, you have to stay at least two years or at least three years, whatever it is, then those years have to be guaranteed for the player also. That's the only way I would accept that. And, well, I mean, it and would, college it football, would I have no sympathy for anybody in college football because the powers that be in college football who are all getting rich should have known this was coming and they did nothing about it. Had they started paying kids or started NIL on their own accord, then we wouldn't be in this situation. So it's completely their fault. And I think every kid out there should make every last freaking dime. And I don't care what Saban or all these other old guys are whining and crying about. That's what I got to say. Could you limit it? Because it, they aren't the same, but they're connected. The money and the transfer portal are, are connected. Could you, would you be opposed to you get one transfer? You're only there four years. You only have four years of eligibility. You get one transfer. Five. Well, if, if you get What's that type? five. <laughs> you get five years. But I think but you they get, got six because of the COVID. That's you get one transfer, and that's it. If you've screwed up, like everybody yeah. at eighteen, you make mistakes yeah, right, right, and right. you go to a place you shouldn't be. But if you go to a second place and you screw that up, that's on you, man. You get one shot to to change schools, and that's it. I don't know. It it just feels like in every other walk of life, you can you can leave whenever you want. You know, I, you guys in a lot of jobs, you got to sign a contract. I got a contract. I can't leave the athletic. Well, you got to sign a contract for a certain amount of time, but right. And you get one chance. I, I, I'm just throwing yeah. it out there. I think you, you, should, you get one transfer in this new world that we're in. And after that. I, I can be talked into rules when it comes to transferring. I, the I money, can, I, I cannot agree. be talked into any rules when it comes to the money. I agree. You should get say, what you want. I'm about to say, if somebody going to pay it. Yeah. Let them. <laughs> yeah. If you can get it, get it. I am all for okay. hey, I'm all for yeah. Yeah. And I, I, Every dollar you yeah. can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everybody else is making money. And, and to your point, yeah. not, not all of them are going to the NFL. College may be their only opportunity to make money in their sport. What percentage be of college football, Division One college football players they like less play than, in the NFL, period? They're like less than 1%. Yeah, it's is not, it really that low? I, I mean, it was that low. How, think how many 85 scholarship spots over 100 Division One A schools. or something like Do that? Do the math. Yeah. 53, man, times 32. Right. And, I mean, there's CFL and there's other leagues, but we're talking NFL here. Yeah. Even if it's Plus, 2%, that's yeah. still 98% yeah. that doesn't so if you ever can, play, you let make, alone have a long career. So, you can make money in college, make it. That's right. And it's not just football. There are some other athletes making money. I'm sure, what's her name? Uh, Caitlin Clark 
It's Caitlin Clark, right? Caitlin Clark. Caitlin I don't know why it's not wrong in my head. There's that gymnast. She's got to be making that a lot of money. That gymnast makes a ton of oh, money. Oh, just from really hot, right? Yeah, Livy I don't know her name. Livy Livy Dunn. Dunn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where LSU. LSU, yeah. Mm-hmm. She makes a How's that? Well, how about the Ohio State basketball player, the point guard? Is she making any money? J.C. Seldon. Yeah, she's got to be making some money now. Uh, I don't know. I have to get Are back. Are you only in, with your No, thing. I do all sports. Oh, you do all sports? Yeah, but it's two collectives, though. So, like, like so she, the foundation could be She's not part doing. of your crew. Well, that's the thing. We, there's, there's no exclusives. Like, we don't just, like, oh. like, 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 I don't so know. Will, Will Howard won't just work with just us. Like, he can work with the foundation, oh, too. So, smart. I don't know all right. what's going on over there. Anyway, you got a thought, Mike? I mean, we kind of got into this yesterday morning before we got on air bowl, and I don't know what the answer is, but I do know from talking to enough people involved with NIL, with coaching, with the constant recruiting of players you already have on your roster, I think there has to be some sort of guideline. I'm not opposed to it being the you could transfer once, but if you tran- but then you have to stay for a certain amount. But I, I want these kids to get paid as much as possible. And the, the scale had been way too – Weight, weighted down and favoring the coaches up until this situation, but it is purely the wild, wild west out there. There's no guardrails. Coaches have different things they could, uh, different boundaries they have to play within, and I think at that point it's it's gone too far, but I want these kids to get paid as much as they can. So. Yeah, by the way, when you put that uh, quote of me saying Jameis has a fat ass, the only problem with that quote is, out of context, nobody knows that I said I can say that because I got a fat ass. That's the whole point of Adam. So I, all I'm going to hear today is people saying, you should talk. <laughs> that's all I'm going to get today. And I did talk. I admit, I, obviously, I have a fat ass. And that's why I can appreciate somebody else that's got a fat ass. But and my, the original point of that is Jameis can't run. Wait, so what we're going to do, by the way, what does that I, think, to? I think we're going to, I got a super chat and I have an idea, Bull. We got something that you like. Jason Thomas. I, I got one quick thing before you read the super chat, but go ahead. Mm. Is it on Gavin Williams? Yeah, go ahead. We're going to save it. that for overtime. We'll talk more. Is he hurt now, too? Yes. I mean, I know Sorry. there was, is he out of the year? No, no, no. Oh. Okay. We'll talk, we'll talk with Chris Anthony. He said at, uh, so what we're going to do, I think we're going to try it. It may not work. It may flame out, but yeah. I like taking these out of context quotes. And then at the end of the show, we'll re- review some of the ones we said. We mm-hmm. won't do it in the moment. We'll let it pass, and then we'll come back. All right. And that means if you missed it in the moment and you just see it out of context at the end, yeah. be like, ooh, Bull said James is a fat ass. i got to go back and find but out what he said. Now, right every, now. I'm going to be harassed all day <laughs> that I have a fat ass. So look at it. Well, I'm just saying. Jeez. I, Jason, I don't really care. I just think it's funny. <laughs> I'm just, you know, playing it up here. Uh, we have one super chat, though, from our guy Skilly. Yeah. Skilly said, what are your thoughts on packaging our second-round pick with Greg Newsom to move into the first round and get a wider seat. Is happen. that enough? Not going I don't happen. think they can get that. No. Not enough. Although they're very clearly they're punting. They're, they're taking the less need approach of F them picks. It feels like. <laughs> yeah. And I, like they can make, I, I think they can bundle more of these picks. And they, if there's, like, there's a guy more they trades love, to come at the draft. There's more trades yeah, coming. Yeah, if there's a guy they love, they should trade up because those like Fourth, fifth, sixth round pick. What are they doing with those guys? Those guys probably aren't making roster the way this roster Not is right now. Like when it. did this Darius trade happen last year? Was it right before the draft? Was it after the draft? When did remember. they actually acquire Darius? I can't Darius? remember. It was before the draft, I think. Because Minnesota okay. was in cap hell. So <laughs> That's true. So it probably had to happen <laughs> earlier. Yeah, I think it was earlier. Only reason what I was, was asking the, no, was, it was, I was it trying was to the, think if there's another 2024 version of this Darius trade coming. It was Elijah Moore that got traded, like, right before the draft, wasn't it? Never made that trade. Moore was No, we are wrong. Meetings. It was it, That trade was in May. Oh, wow. Okay. According to CBSSports.com, Smith was traded to the Browns by the Vikings last May. Well, Minnesota was in – that was the cap move for Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe they made an addition around that time or something. <laughs> I don't know. Go ahead, Mike. That was the only super chat, so oh, we're right. good. Okay, so no, we're talking about Gavin Williams on overtime? We're talking, yeah, Gavin Williams. We go some of the tweets. I guess Chris Antonetti spoke at uh, okay. 1230, so we'll kind of go through what he said. Dissect it and get people ready for the Ultimate Guardian show, which starts on <sighs> March. I thought 25. you said you had some idea or something that you wanted to run by us. Idea. You got any more quotes that you got to put up? Uh, and do we have any more? Let me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can take this one. I, just, just to put up ahead. there again. If you missed it, Bull in saying Jameis has a fat ass <laughs> also wants to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I like so, that. There you go. 
I have a fat ass. I do. Yeah, I'm proud of my fat ass. Uh, By the way, uh, (laughs) make sure today at 2 p.m., about an hour from now at 2 p.m., I'll be doing a live stream of the bullpen with me. And if you could pop, if you want to be on camera and ask a question or make a comment, I'll send out a, a, a link to do that right at 2 o'clock. 2 p.m. today on YouTube, the bullpen live. We'll be talking about all the Browns transactions in the last few days. If I wasn't driving, I would so you jump on with me. Jump on the link just well, to you ask can't pull over for a minute. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. By the way, Jason would have been semi proud of me in Florida. In Jason fashion, at one point we were driving, right, the last day in Florida we drove from where I was staying near Tampa to my mom in southern, further south in Florida. Were you we watching to, Netflix and eating a Mexican pizza? No, no, but I got the car up. I wanted to hit 100, and Aaron's in the back seat. I'm like, buddy, I'm about to hit 100. And then I was like 98, 99, and like a car kind of cut oh, and kind of had yeah, to slow yeah, down, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I stopped at 99. I never got to 100. <laughs> my wife was not thrilled that I was even at 99. We'll see you in overtime. <laughs>